this way. Big 8 Coach of the Year three times, National Coach of the Year twice. Impressive. And of course, both of these teams were winners of bowl games last year. And if you take the Big 12, seven teams ranked in the top 25 last year. A gorgeous afternoon. A little bit warm down in the field, though. 85 degrees. That may play a role. Yeah, that's a good point. That 85 degrees is a little bit deceiving. They say it's over 100 degrees on the artificial surface. The sun has been pounding it all morning. But now the cloud cover coming in a little bit, I think, can help. Now, they were calling for showers the last couple of days to hit this afternoon. So as the clouds gather, that could be in the offing. And conditioning definitely will be a factor in the fourth quarter. But back deep for Texas Tech, Dean Johnson and Clint Robertson. A look at Robertson on the top of your screen, a freshman out of Dallas, and Jamie Ream, a freshman out of Wichita, Kansas, and a walk-on will kick off for Kansas State. Both of these teams have had kicking and punting problems. We'll chronicle those later on. Yeah, Kansas State won the uh, toss and deferred. They want to get their defense on the field first. Last year's top defense in the country. The first kickoff of the Big 12 Conference, and we are underway here in Manhattan. And it'll be Robertson at his own six. Still on his feet and out to the 30. A good return for Clint Robertson. Good field position for Texas Tech as they open up. And there is the football that will head to the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend, Indiana. They'll bring it over to the sideline. Make sure it's in good hands throughout the afternoon. Don't tell me they're going to hand it back to Lewis. <laughs> Representative of the College Football Hall of Fame. That now will go directly to South Bend, Indiana. And leading the show for Texas Tech, Zebby Lethrich, the quarterback. You see his numbers over 1,800 yards and he is a junior and a good one and Timmy he can not only throw he gets out in the corner and runs only six interceptions and 13 touchdowns last year Byron Hanspart a good one the play action and on the roll is Lethwick up to about the 34 yard line so a gain of about three on the first play from scrimmage and the Chili's offensive backs and receivers for Texas Tech you cannot talk about the Red Raiders without talking about Byron Hanspart. He is a good one over 1,300 yards on the season last year. Yeah, he really is. He's special. You know, when you look at him, you say, hey, he's not that impressive size-wise. Six foot, 195 pounds, 18 touchdowns, and the MVP of the Copper Bowl. And the offensive line led by Ben Kaufman, a senior out of Edinburgh, Texas. And here's Hanspart to the near side with room to the 46, the 47 yard line in the first down for Texas Tech. The hit made by Clyde Johnson. Defensive back out of Austin, Texas. But a gain of 13 for Hanspark. And another look at the offensive line. Ben Kaufman leading the way at left tackle, but they're a little bit undermanned. Casey Jones, a senior, one of the leaders on the offensive line out. There's a question with his eligibility right now. Casey Jones is the kind of guy that'll move to the next level, too, in the National Football League. But Ben Kaufman is the senior, the leader. He is a three-year starter. He's 280 pounds. They'll rely heavily on him today. So first down at the 48, the quick offense. And they give the hands part left side. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Mario Smith, number four, came up to make the stop. But a good defensive front, although they're trying to replace three starters from last year. The linebacking core led by Travis Oaks, whose brother Dirk led the way here at Kansas State the last couple of years. But this is a great young player. And still a solid defense. This is a big, strong defense with a lot of quicks. And if you see Chris Candy, folks, this guy, he almost turned pro last year. NFL sad he didn't. He is a quality player that plays offense, defense, and returns punts. Second and ten, Lethwich on the roll. And one out of bounds at the 48. Clyde Johnson again in on the stop. Oh, Timmy, we talked about the two most explosive offenses. You look at what Tech did last year, 205 yards on the ground, but the defense for Kansas State, number one in the country, giving up only 250 yards per game. Right, Kansas State, though, right now have a containment problem. Here's the big thing, Terry. If you look, 30 points a game for uh, the Tech offense, and that's what uh, Kansas State has to stop. It's an explosive attack that really has, uh, right now has Kansas State on its heels. So a big play in terms of the opening drive. Third and seven, Lethwick, run out of the pocket. The hand spot with the catch, a first down and more. 
down to the 35-yard line. Chris Kenny on the coverage and the tackle, but a big gain and a big play for this Tech offense. Those two guys right there, Lethridge and Hansbard, accounted for three-fourths of the yards gained in the touchdown scored last year for Texas Tech. Those are the two guys they have to stop. Now, right away, Lethridge is causing problems because of his uh, athletic ability and his quickness to get outside. Just tosses it over. Hansbard's wide open because they're chasing Lethridge. They give up the flats. First down, move the chains again. That one-two punch, Hanspart and Zebby Lethridge. First down at the 35. Here's Byron Hanspart. Fights his way maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Mark Simino, along with Deshaun Fogel, the two linebackers, in on the tackle. Byron Hanspart may be the quickest licensed minister in college football, huh? Licensed minister, that's right. He's not ordained yet, but uh, he's working toward that. This is what we just talked about. You look at these numbers and you say, whoa, those two guys did that? Three-fourths of the yards gained and touchdown score. Well, we talked to Bob Cope and Mike Stoops, the two defensive coordinators for Kansas State. They said, yeah, it's nice to have all the offense focused on two people, but the trick is stopping them. Second and ten, and out to Sheldon Bass, the intended receiver but broken up by Lamar Chapman, and they will test him early. Yes, they will. Now, you look at the defense, the best secondary in the country, Kansas State, but they're missing Joe Gordon, the All-American cornerback on that side. So Lamar Chapman, the freshman, steps up. They do test him there. He had great inside-out leverage. The ball was caught. He actually knocked it away once he made the catch, knocked him out of bounds. Great coverage. Chapman, a former quarterback and a high school All-American, beat out Dimitri Denmark for that starting cornerback position for Joe Gordon they hope to have back by the Nebraska game big third down third and ten Lethridge straight drop rushed and brought down at the line of scrimmage Clyde Johnson again in on the tackle and he has been active early Andrew Tickets number 99 the senior out of Brooksville Florida flushed him out of the pocket Terry, watching them in pregame warm-ups as the uh, field goal team comes on, will tell you that Texas Tech, Jared Greaser, the kicker, he was nailing 57-yard field goals in pregame warm-ups. Yeah, we watched him hit four or five in a row. He's got a little breeze to his back. To try of 53 yards. It is no good. Oh, he had the distance, just barely missed it. Had plenty of leg, but no good on the field goal attempt. So we are scoreless, and Kansas State will take over when we come back to Manhattan. USC invades Illinois. Big Ten power Penn State hosts Louisville. More games featuring Florida State or Oklahoma. Part of an ABC college football doubleheader next Saturday. Kansas State takes over at its own 36-yard line. And Ryan Cavanaugh, the guy who came on for Matt Miller, who was injured in the Holiday Bowl. Those are the numbers he rang up. 242 yards and four touchdowns, but making his first start of his career. It's funny. He says he looks at that MVP trophy. He still thinks he's dreaming. Three receivers set, and the handoff to Mike Warren straight up the middle and caught behind the line of scrimmage. And the Chili's offensive backs and receivers for Kansas State. One name is missing, Eric Hickson, who broke a leg, the leading rusher from last year. He is out for the season. But Kevin Lockett, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the wideout and the number one receiver in the Big 8 last year. You know, here's a guy that's All-American not only on the football field, but also in the classroom. He graduated last May with a degree in accounting, carries a... 3-5 GPA, very intelligent, talented receiver who will probably break all the receiving records. Second and 11. Kavanaugh again to Lawrence. No room. Maybe you head for a yard or two. That's it. Corey Chandler, the defensive tackle, made the tackle. And his offensive line for Kansas State, huge, <laughs> big. They average about 305, led by Jason Johnson. Who only goes about 275. Yeah, he's he's been called for only two penalties his entire career. He's very solid, mistake-free. Both sides of him, Greenwood and Jaycox, are quality players. They like to follow those three and already have here in this first series. Johnson's father, Bob, played for the Kansas City Chiefs right up the road. Third and seven, Kavanaugh under pressure, and down he goes. Number 30, Jody Brown. Came on a safety blitz. Nobody picked him up, untouched. 
Take a look at this. Watch number 30. Nobody's watching for the safety. They put him on the weak side. There's no tight end, no blocker, no back. Clean shot at the quarterback, Kavanaugh. Boy, as a defensive player, you just chomp at the bit when you see no one in front of you and no one there to pick you up. So in to punt, James Garcia. And back deep, Dane Johnson calls for the fair catch at the 24-yard line. A good punt of 44 yards. And no return, and Texas Tech will take over there when we come back. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Bando. Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers, the Corel Corporation, makers of Corel Word Perfect Suite, and Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Bando. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Texas Tech going with no huddle, coming right off the sidelines and lining up. So a lot of no huddle last year. And if they don't go no huddle, they at least come quickly to the line. Get up there and go. Here's Byron Hanspar looking for room and is not going to find any. Knocked out at the 25. Lamar Chapman in on the tackle. Tackle number 17, Lamar Chapman. Chapman, a red shirt freshman out of Liberal, Kansas. It's the first ever matchup between two Big 12 schools. Obviously, we've already seen some Big 12 teams play. Texas A&M losing to BYU and Kansas winning big over Ball State the other night. As you look at some of the games around the country. Lethbridge on the roll, and they've blown the whistle. Flag down about the 27-yard line out there on the far side. Texas Tech really tries to mess up their defenses by racing to the line and going with no huddle occasionally. Start. Legal procedure, and they'll move him back. One of the things that coaches have to worry about early on, Timmy, too, the, the mistakes in that first game. I'm surprised it took this long. I mean, we were, we're well into the first quarter now. Normally, the first game does have a lot of flags. I know that uh, coaches really look for that in the fourth quarter when they, their legs get tired and they start lunging and using their hands a lot more. Spike Dykes. Talked to him yesterday about this conference and uh, the schedules that these teams have to play now. Second and 15, Lethbridge on the roll. Out to the fullback, Sammy Morris. And up to the 30-yard line, Mario Smith in on the tackle. Kansas State with the uh, number one defense in the country last year in total defense. They pride themselves in the attack scheme. In other words, with all the teams now going to these wide formations, spread formations, using the run and gun, the fun and gun and passing, they say, well, the defense is having caught up. But what they do here at Kansas State, they just play attack football. Now, they all have assignments, but they play very aggressively, and they've got the cornerbacks and secondary to play man-to-man, -man, which allows you to be aggressive like that, and that is a great answer. This is what we were talking about a few minutes ago, just down the road in Lawrence, Kansas, with a big win Thursday night over Ball State. Another big third down play, third and five at the 30. And now timeout is called Texas by Texas Tech. So when we come back, it'll be third and five on the 30 for the Red Raiders. Fifty-six left here in the first quarter. Third and five at the 30-yard line for Texas Tech on their second drive of the ball game. Zevi Lethridge under center. Morris in motion, and now Lethridge with a straight drop. Caught at the 40-yard line and knocked out of bounds up at the 47. Donnie Hart with the catch. And again, they work on Lamar Chapman, the redshirt freshman. Not only did they go to the freshman, but they didn't use hands part. Watch this now. They, 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 go to, they go to Hart, and everybody's looking for hands part. This is one-on-one -on -one coverage out here with the freshman. Boom, just gives him a little swim move, moves inside, and all of a sudden, Chapman trips over his own feet. Lethridge put it right there. You know, Lethridge has a strong arm. He's explosive. At times, he's erratic, but he reminds me of uh, Randall Cunningham with his feet. He's probably better while throwing on the run. First down after the gain of 12 straight ahead to the 45-yard line. Walker, number 42, and a gain of about two for Sammy Morris, the redshirt freshman out of San Antonio. Texas Tech came into this ball game. Part of the game plan was to put a man on Mario Smith. Mario Smith is the free safety. They use him a lot. 
not only in run support, but on blitzes. They'll also set him back and let him play center field. He is the safety. But they feel like he is such a key to that offense, or that defense that they want to put a man on him as well as Travis Oaks, the linebacker. Smith with two interceptions in the Holiday Bowl. He was the defensive MVP of that game. Second and seven. Here's Hans Park. Hit right at the line and driven down. No game. Travis Oaks, the man who came up to make the stop along with Niall Wyron. Boy, I'll tell you what, Niren does a great job. Watch Travis Oaks get up in there. Boom! Take on that block right now. Get rid of him and get it on the tackle. Wyron's had containment, forced him back into Oaks, and both of those guys brought him down. That is terrific defensive play right there. Now, Travis's brother Dirk was a star here at Kansas State. He talked about how important it was to have a brother here on campus to ease him into that first year of play, and Travis last year, the defensive newcomer of the year in the Big Eight. And first team all academic. Third down six, 46 yeah, the defense, five. they lost a lot. There's not much depth now. They lost Tim Colston and Ray Eagle and, and as you mentioned, Dirk Oaks. Boy, that's a talented defensive group, though. Third and six at the 46. Matt to Buck now in motion to the far side. Lethwick under pressure and now the ball's on the turf. Picked up at the 42-yard line by Jerome Evans. The first big play of this game. Kansas State takes over at the 43. You talk about a confident defense. Look, everybody is lined up up here except for Mario Smith, and he is seven yards off the ball. That's confidence. They've got man coverage everywhere, but the four guys up front have such great pressure. Lethridge is scrambling already. Now stop it right there. He went to catch himself with his hand, and by putting his hand down like that, the ball's out there, got touched by Wyron, fumble turnover. The give to Mike Lawrence straight ahead inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line gain of about five on the first down of this series. Well the Texas Tech defense and they will see an eight man front for much of the game. They like to bring up their linebackers crowd that line of scrimmage and stop the run. It is a very small defense for Texas Tech. The average weight 199 pounds but it's a defense with big play capabilities. Over the last two years, nine turnovers that they've turned into touchdowns. Monte Regra, a freshman starter last year, now in his sophomore year. Kavanaugh to throw. Off the hands of Lockett, and that could have been picked off. The coverage by Jody Brown. The defensive backs for Texas Tech. Tony Darden, who was a quarterback originally in his career, last year was a wideout. Started the first five games, then went down with an ankle injury, but now... His first game in that secondary. High school quarterback. You know, Tech lost three starters in the secondary. It's definitely the area of concern for the Red Raiders. Third down and five at the 38-yard line. Lawrence, the lone setback. And Kavanaugh checks off at the line of scrimmage. Down to five on the play clock. He's got to get the ball snapped. He does. The quick out is batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Number 34, that's Monte Rager. Well, I want to tell you something. Cody Patton, a defensive tackle, actually a nose tackle. He hit Kavanaugh. It looked like he had him in a funny position around his knee. If anything happens to Brian Kavanaugh at quarterback, look out because Cody Lee Smith, the guy that backs him up, is ill. He's lost 60 pounds. He's been in and out of the hospital. They've got a true freshman in Beasley who probably would come in, so they don't want to lose Kavanaugh. James Garcia in for a second punt of the afternoon. And muffed by Dave Johnson right at the 10-yard line. And recovered by Kansas State. A tight end, Justin Swift, in on the recovery. And Timmy, that's two quick breaks for Kansas State. They weren't able to capitalize on the first. Dane Johnson just took his eye off of it, plus he's looking back into the sun. But this is a gift. You put Kansas, Kansas State down inside the 10-yard line, and Kansas State is terrific down in that area. They score almost every time they have it inside the 15. Kansas State gets a huge break here. So first and goal at the 10. Goolsby and Lawrence in the backfield along with Kavanaugh out of the shotgun. Double pass down to Lawrence. Looking for the end zone, can't get there. 
and stopped at the six. Nice play by Dane Johnson, the free safety. You know, we saw that problem in pregame warm-ups. Guys were trying to field punts for Texas Tech, looking back into the sun. Safest play in football right here, folks. If he drops it, it's just an incomplete pass. Just They go in their, underneath the aggressive Tech defense, just get it to him like a little shuffle pass and let him go with it. Second and goal at the six. Didier, the tight end in motion here from Lawrence, looking for him. Inside the five, down to the two. Ball carry was number 20, Mike Lawrence. Now, this is a complicated scheme that Bill Snyder runs here with the offense. Yeah, but the big thing's up front. Watch how these guys fire out. They slide down the line, hold their blocks. Then here comes big old number 74 over. That's Jay Cox. He clears it out when he's pulling it. That's impressive. That line, as you mentioned, is over 305 pounds. Bill Snyder says it's the best offensive line he's ever had. Goolsby and Lawrence in the eye. Third and goal at the three up is Lawrence. He's not going to get there. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage, Cody McGuire. All right, coach, what do you do here now on fourth down and close? You kick the field goal or you go for it? Here we go. Offensive line locks on their blocks. The big difference was, though, they didn't give up. They gave off. The defense slid off the block, got into the hole, and made the stop. Look at this. They got low. They didn't give ground. They got off their blocks and made the tackle. Kansas State is going for it on fourth down. Bill Snyder, the first big decision of the game. Didn't get Lawrence did not get there. Stopped inside the two at the one, and a big stand for Texas Tech. Oh, Tony Daniels made a great play. Monte Rager also there to stop it. You had your two ends pinching down, Rager and Daniels. Watch the two outside guys slide down the line. Boom, here they come. Pinch, boom, just they collide right on it from the outside, both guys. You know, Tony Daniels, before he hurt his knee in a, in a diving accident last summer, showed great promise. They think he's going to be a terrific, gifted athlete. Hey, he was a preseason All-Southwest Conference player before the season, obviously, and uh, an odd accident. So Texas Tech, a big swing of momentum, but now they take over at the one-yard line. Lethridge just trying to get room to run the offense. May have gained one. Hey, talk to the coaches, Timmy, and ask them about Sebi Lethridge. They say the biggest difference between last year and this year, at this point at least, is just the confidence that he comes in with to run this offense. Yeah. You know, he really never has been a mistake type of guy. Only 15 interceptions in two years. He once went 211 straight passes without an interception, but uh, he's so much more confident, and what that does, it gives himself the quickness because he's not thinking anymore. He's just reacting. Second and eight. Hands part. Up to the five, maybe. Travis Oaks made the stop. I don't mean he's just not thinking. He's not thinking about what he has to do. He reacts Sometimes yeah, you think too much yeah. on the football field. Boy, Kansas State got a great break after the fumble on the punt and couldn't capitalize. Remember that one, folks. Two big breaks, in fact. The fumble by Lethridge. And they could not move the ball, and the fumble bring the ball to 10. Lethridge on the roll. Throwing deep, he's got Stacy Mitchell behind the defense. Up to midfield and knocked out of bounds, actually, at the 49-yard line. What a huge play. I'm sure Lamar Chapman, who gave up another reception there, the freshman, may not have ever seen him. He's only 5'5". Five five. Here's the third smallest guy in all of college football, but watch him. He's the inside receiver now. Here he is. He knows he's covered, breaks off his route, slides behind Chapman. Great, great read by Mitchell that time to break off, adjust, and Lethbridge found him. Finally taken down by Clyde Johnson. Five foot five. <laughs> Remember Ty Thurman? Yeah. Five is about five three. Five foot three, all American. So a gain of 45. Hands part. No room. Got back to the line. Boy, they ought to use Stacy Mitchell more. I mean, the guy runs 4-4. Nobody can even find him. He's only 5'5". Five 5'5", five. Five, five, 150 pounds. Out of DeSoto, Texas. Brings up a second and 10 at the 49. Some of the other 
Games going on on ESPN tonight at 7.30 Eastern. That would be 6.30 Central here in this area. West Virginia taking on Pitt. Play action. Looking to get outside is Lethridge. And tiptoes to about the 49, but there's a flag down right at midfield. Late flag, and it should have been thrown immediately. Kansas State got caught coming across the uh, neutral zone before the snap. It'll be off sides against Kansas State. Watch this. Here it is. They're anticipating. They've been going on a quick count, and now all of a sudden Lethridge goes on the third count. He goes, go, 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 and they jumped. And that's got to be awfully tough, too, for Bill Snyder's defense because they come up to the line, and normally he goes on that first count, and they go. It's funny. We talked about that yesterday. During mm -hmm. practice, he kept going on that first go. And every time I said, boy, you can anticipate that if you're the defense. And then uh, Spike Dykes just kind of smiled. <laughs> you know, he knows he'll change up the count and catch him. Second down five, 46-yard line. The first matchup in this Big 12 conference, and... Things have changed for the former members of the Southwest Conference. Obviously, everyone here, but in terms of schedule, boy, things are awfully tough now. Second and five, Lethridge on the roll. Goes behind his receiver, but caught at the 35-yard line. And that's Donnie Hart again. So they'll move the chains once again. Texas Tech pretty impressive so far. Don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team to date. Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. A lot of people may be surprised by what's taken place here in the first quarter so far. Kansas State came in the favorite, playing at home. They thought, well, they'll get off here quickly, but they've been the slow ones, and there they jump again. That ball, ball start on the offense. And Still it goes against out. Texas Tech this time. Officials discussed it long time. They looked, looked like Wyron jumped again, but he was drawn off this time. This would drive a coach nuts. Spike Dyke's terrific offensive mind. Three straight bowl wins or games, excuse me. Five straight years, no lower than second in the Southwest Conference. I'll tell you this, his offenses have set 59 individual and or team records since he's come to Texas Tech. <laughs> two passing records in the last two matchups against Kansas State. First and 15, here's Hat Lethridge on the roll. It's out of bounds, about the 34-yard line. Looked like Ryan Jones was about to set a big block for him, but he got out of bounds. Now, Monday night, the biggest names in the history of professional football share their memories with us in a one-hour primetime special. Join us for ABC's Monday Night Football Mania. And the Chicago Bears host Troy Aikman and the world champion Dallas Cowboys on the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. In action Monday night here on ABC Sports. There was some doubt whether Emmett Smith would be able to play in that game. Obviously, he now has gotten to go, wants to play, says he's ready and confident to go. Second and nine for Lethridge. Throws out to his fullback, Ryan Jones, who can't hold on. Coverage by Travis Oaks. And Lethridge now five out of seven for 92 yards. Surprising how easily the Red Raiders have been able to move the ball. Now, they did that in the bowl game, the Copper Bowl against the Air Force. They averaged nine yards per carry. But here they've mixed up the offense. They've gone to... Uh, Little intermediate routes in their passing game. They've given it to Harnsbard. Kansas State has won its last six home openers. Texas Tech's last win on the road in an opener in 1977. That was against Baylor. Third and nine. A lot of time now flushed out of the pocket is Lethridge. And Zebby is dumped at the 36-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down, another field goal attempt. But I'll tell you this, when you look at those, those numbers about opening days, look at the difference in the teams, though. And that's been something they've talked about here. I mean, you know, Temple and Akron, they aren't on the schedule anymore. And they're playing a tougher opener. 
Look at the quickness of this guy. He's got a great sense of where the pressure's coming from. Gets outside. He's still looking for a receiver as he gets on the corner, but he has nowhere to go, so they'll try this one more time. Tony Rogers. Tony Rogers now on for the field goal try. He has a strong leg too, Terry. He he missed a 58-yarder in the pregame warm-ups, but made from this distance. This is a 53-yard attempt. Long enough, and it is good. A 53-yard field goal by Tony Rogers, and it's three to nothing. You know, Spike Dice just must have a feeling, and I, I know he watches these guys in pregame warm-ups. This guy was drilling them from that distance before the, the game started. Had a good hold, too. Watch this. It's a, it's a low snap, but watch how it's fielded. Boom. Now get it up, turn the laces. Gives him a good hold, and that's a strong leg by Tony Rogers. And watch this. He not only punched it through, but he made it with room to spare. And when we told you that he missed a 57-yarder in the pregame warm-ups, it was long enough. It was just wide. Mm -hmm. Field Scoble, the holder on that, and a nice play to manage the laces. So Bill Snyder's team trailing 3 nothing with a minute 55 left here in the first quarter. And a beautiful afternoon here in Manhattan, Kansas. The schedule for these teams, not so beautiful, though, when you look at who you have to face down the road. And Texas Tech's opponents, the top three the same, Baylor, Texas A&M, and Texas, not in this order. But then, instead of Rice, TCU, it goes Kansas State, Kansas, SMU, no, Nebraska now. And Oklahoma, the breather? And look what our guy said. Spike Dyke says, looks to me like we've got our tails to the heater. Yeah, I think Spike is right. And you know the tough part is these teams now have to play eight conference games. And in a conference like this, it means week after week, you're playing a big-time player, plus big-time Team. If you do, Tim, end up with a great season in the Big 12, then you play the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in St. Louis. So that's another game. And theoretically, if you're in Nebraska, another dangerous game on a road to a national championship. Well, you know, they actually moved this game, and Tech agreed to move this game to August 31st, not because they were dying to play the first ever Big 12 game, but to break up that schedule. I mean, they've got Kansas, Nebraska, A&M, and as, as you said, uh, Texas, and they would have had Kansas State in there, so they moved it to, to this date. Andre Anderson back deep, awaiting the kick. Deep for Kansas State, number 22, Jimmy Dean, and number 25, Andre Henderson. Anderson at his goal line. Still on his feet at the 20 and taken down at the 21 yard line. Roddy Cartwright made the tackle. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, Steve Martin in a network television premiere. Sarah Jessica Parker co stars in LA Story. It's all part of ABC's Sunday night lineup, starting with America's Funniest Home Videos and Lois and Clark tomorrow night on ABC. All right, Kansas State has to get something going here. Virtually no offense. As a matter of fact, if you look at the first downs, Texas Tech has had five of them. Kansas State has yet to get one. Mm. Eight total yards. That's with under two minutes to play in the first quarter. You know, an optimist would say at least they're balanced. <laughs> Have another throw on first down. And almost picked off by Johnson. Dane Johnson read that thing. He was playing Pass free, was free safety. Was in his own coverage. They had uh, two deep, five under. All right, here comes Jimmy Dean. Now watch, gets a move. He's got man coverage here, but all of a sudden, boom, Johnson's playing free because he's back in the two deep and almost had the pick. And knows it. See, Brian Cavanaugh with his first start today of this season. First start as a quarterback in Kansas State. He's got to read that too deep and know somebody's playing three. He's played in 14 games throughout his career, but this is his first start. Second and 10, looking up top, near sideline to lock it. A lot of contact, and the crowd wants the flag, but none comes. Corey Turner was looking around for it, though. There is a flag back by Cavanaugh. Back in the, the Kansas State. Boy, and it's going to be roughing the passer against Texas Tech. 
Cavanaugh seemed to have a lot of time, but watch this now. Here's the bumping and grinding that's going on. It's man coverage again. Now Lockett thinks he can beat him. Says, if I'm even, I'm leaving. But look, that's pretty good coverage by Turner, who's using that left arm rather easily and a lot. He got away with it. Now he'll stand up and look for a flag. First down. They still get tagged for 15 yards for roughing Cavanaugh in the backfield. So they move it up to the 36-yard line, so just outside of the 35. And there's no question there was contact all the way up the sideline. Incidental contact's not bad, but when you start using that left arm to gain an advantage, they've got to call it. Mike Lawrence straight ahead up to the 37. Number 20, Mike Lawrence. Gain of almost two. Lawrence, the second leading rusher last year, gained almost 600 yards and had four stars. But we mentioned Eric Hickson, who is out with a broken leg, and he is out for the season. So Lawrence becomes the starting tailback and takes on the load. See his numbers from 95. Yeah, he got a lot of playing time last year, so he's time tested. Had four starts, 599 yards on the year. Strong runner. Bench is about 330 pounds and only weighs about 190. He's not a breakaway threat, though, like Hickson. Four receivers in that. Kavanaugh. To midfield, complete to Jimmy Dean. And to the 48 of Texas Tech, Tony Dart made the tackle. And let's step away and check in with John Saunders up in New York. John? All right, Terry, thanks a lot. We're going to bring you some action from the ACC. Clemson against North Carolina. And Leon Johnson, who seems like he's been there forever, but he still has this year left, busting this one down towards the goal line. Just tripped up right there. They spot it at the one. He takes it in on the next play. Carolina leading Clemson 7-0. Terry. So Leon Johnson starting the year off right. The heels at home against Clemson. First and 10, Kavanaugh up to the 42-yard line. And down to the 40, Kevin Lockett not only caught it, but did something after he got it. Kevin Kavanaugh in the last two possessions has been throwing in rhythm. He's finding his step. He's using that back foot to force himself into the throw. And I mean to tell you, he's throwing frozen ropes, really putting a lot of velocity on this ball. So the end of the first quarter with Kansas State driving, it is 3-0 Texas Tech. August 31st, 1996, a day that certainly will be remembered in this part of the country and I think through most of the country. The inaugural game of the Big 12. Second and two on the 40-yard line. Ryan Kavanaugh under pressure. Throws it out to lock it, but out of bounds. Boy, what a play by Anthony Armour. Came on a blitz, showed the blitz. Nobody picked him up again. Back trying to pick him up and couldn't. Kavanaugh now three for eight. Look at 37, Armour. Anthony Armour comes through. Nobody's going to stop him. That just forces Kavanaugh to unload it, so he basically just throws a dead duck out of bounds. Lockett had no shot at that. Oh, Lockett has made a catch, though, which extends his streak to 33 consecutive games. And look at Armour. Buckus Award candidate, a senior from Dallas. And Colorado has scored again. It is 10-0 over Washington State. Carl Detmer with a one-yard run. Third and two, Kavanaugh with a straight drop. Lock it again, he's out there, and he makes an incredible grab at the 11-yard line. What a catch. You know, I think Turner was going to get called anyway for pass interference, but that was a terrific catch. One-on-one -on -one with Corey Turner. We saw it a moment ago, but, Timmy, I'm not sure how he hauled this one in. No, again, it's man coverage, though, and Turner, the sophomore, having a tough time with him. This ball is perfectly thrown over the top. Now, watch 21 come under. There's his right hand. He bumps into him, forces Lockett backwards. Lockett still makes the catch. You know, nobody in this conference has gained more than 2,150 yards and caught more than 145 passes by the end of his senior year or his uh, sophomore year, rather, and Lockett has. Gain of 29, first and 10 at the 12. There's Lockett again, inside the five to the four. No question who they want to go to. Well, he's a sure-handed receiver. I mean, the guy can get free. He knows how to run the discipline routes and how to break them off. 
And Kavanaugh right now feels very comfortable to him. He's putting the ball right where he has to. He's not breaking stride. He's getting outside of the linebackers and in one-on-one -on -one coverage with the DBs. He knows he's got enough confidence in Lockett that he'll get there and get free. He did 307 yards coming into this game to become the all-time leading receiver in K-State history. Second and two. Maybe a yard, a yard and a half. That's it. You remember the last drive after the fumble on the punt. Kansas State took over at the 10-yard line and could not score. They went for it on fourth down, and Lawrence was stopped. Two things to look for here. Kansas State has a huge offensive line, averaging over 300 pounds. Texas Tech, which is a lot smaller, though, uses this eight-man front, almost like the old wide tackle six. And I mean, they jam things up in there. Ryan Goolsby now in at fullback. And a couple of Red Raiders coming across the line. Oh, my. That's a terrible mental error by Tony Daniels. Tony Daniels just came through and tried to anticipate the count. Down here, you've got to be so disciplined. You've got to watch the ball and not listen to the quarterback. These mistakes can kill you. Watch the top of your screen. Dead ball, offside, on the defense. That's the distance. Still third down. Boy, Tony Daniels has all the tools. They call him a gifted athlete. The guy's got tremendous potential. 6'5", 250. I mean, he's the prototype defensive end on the, this level. Just for a minute had a mental breakdown, mental mistake that really cost him. Now it gives him that, uh, that ball down inside the, the three-yard line. Well, it was third and three at the four. Now it's third and one at the two. Kavanaugh straight ahead, and I believe he got it, and that's what it allows you to do as an offense. The penalty, very costly. Now you're down inside the one and have first and goal. Now the defense had stopped Lawrence on the previous play and, of course, on that goal line stand. But the penalty brought it actually under a yard Hold on. first down. They're going to measure this thing, though. That's how close it is. He may not have gotten it. here you can't give up a defense even though they're down inside the two yard line and now have first and goal four shots at it you've got to tell yourself you've got to make that stop you've got to put your nose and chin almost to the ground and get under the offense defensive lineman's job is just to get under that offensive line and make a pile up so the linebackers can come and fill that's exactly what Daniels and Monte Rager did on that goal line stand but now it's first and goal at the one the tenth play of the drive for Kansas State back to the goal line and he didn't get in Brian Goolsby the sophomore out of Dodge City Kansas and just like that Colorado up 17 to nothing Detmer one yard touchdown run adds to his statistics he's a Heisman Trophy candidate final year at Colorado Boy, watch the play by Rieger, number 34. See him, the right hand of your screen? Again, he's pinching down, makes the stop. Boy, if you're Goolsby, you have to reach that ball earlier before you're marked down before your knee touches. Kavanaugh straight ahead. Did he break the plane? He got it. He got it. Touchdown, Kansas State. It wasn't easy, but maybe on the second effort, Brian Kavanaugh on the quarterback sneak got to the end zone. You know, sometimes when your offensive line is that big, you've got to wait to find the hole. Look at this. He can't get through his own guys. Now watch. He'll bounce, keep driving. Oh, I don't know. You know, his knee touched before he broke that plane. But here they give it to him. Jamie Ream on for the extra point. And it is good. Watch his right knee as he goes in. He hasn't broken the plane, and there's his knee. He touched. The Super Bowl.
Bowl champion Cowboys start the season in prime time against the big bad Chicago Bears on the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. 7-3, Kansas State has taken the lead over Texas Tech. 11-42 left until halftime. Robertson at his own three with the drop. Nowhere to go. Out to maybe the 17-yard line, and that's where Texas Tech will take over. What about the last touchdown, Timmy? Terry, awfully close. We told you how close this was. Now take a look at it. Let it roll. But we're going to freeze it now as Kavanaugh gets near the goal line. Again, we told you that his knee may have touched before he crossed that plane. Now, here he comes, and I'm going to tell him to freeze this replay in just a second. All right, go ahead and freeze it now. All right, there's his knee. He's on the ground. Here's the ball. The ball has to break the field side of that plane. It does. So that's a good call by the official. He's in there. That's a touchdown. But that's how close it was. And have pretty good eyes to pick that out. Just did get across the line. Hands part straight ahead. He got caught behind the line. May have lost a yard. Matt Swayzer in on the tackle, along with Andrew Timmons. So it brings up a second down and 10 at the 17-yard line. Well, Texas Tech has been able to move second the football. 10, the one field goal by Rodgers. Tony Rodgers, a 53-yard field goal on the last drive. Lethridge looking for receivers and now room. Run up and to the 27. Terry, is he dangerous? Uh, oh, my. What a dimension he gives an offense. We talked to the defense coordinators for Texas Tech. They said the number one thing, Byron Hansbart, yes, but Lethridge, you have to contain him and not let him scramble out of the pocket. First of all, they spread the defense. They had three receivers to one side and Hart to the other. Now, watch this. He looks. Defense is thin anyway. Now they're spread out with a rush. He finds the gap and explodes. Finally, Mark Simino has to chase him down. But he moves the chain, or almost moves the chains, gets up third down and short now. 19 yards rushing on the afternoon with Zebby Lethridge. The pitch out to Hanspart, one on one on the corner. Up the 47 yard line. Hanspart with a big gain Longer and a first four, down for Byron Texas Hanspart. Tech. And let's take you up to John Saunders in New York. Seven, Clyde Johnson. All right, Terry, Washington State and Colorado. Coy Detmer already had run one in for a touchdown here. He spots James Kidd at about the three, fights off a couple of tackles, and spins it in for the touchdown. Seven yards, and right now, Colorado and the Buffs rolling. 17-zip over Washington State. Terry. All right, John. Folks talking about how dangerous Washington State was going to be for Colorado. Not so far. Number five team in the country. First and 10 at the 46 after the big game by Hans Park. A quick throw and too quick for Ryan Jones. Mark Semino's lucky he didn't get charged with pass interference here, too. The linebacker just riding him out. Well, we told you it's a hot afternoon. Fans on the sidelines. Temperature in the mid-80s. Down on the field, I'm sure, at least 10 to 15 degrees warmer than that. Breeze up here, but not a whole lot down on the field. Here comes the option, the hands part. Gets outside and may have gotten the first down he did. Throw a flag, that's, that's a, there's yeah. no reason for that. Late hit. That's frustration right there. Beat everybody, the defensive back gets out, gets frustrated, and throws it down way out of bounds. I mean, he was out of bounds by three or four strides. Boy, he sure was. Now, here comes Mario Smith. Mario Smith has his... Now, here's a guy that should know better, too. Mario Smith is a senior. He should know better than that. He's way out of bounds when he throws him down. Now, that's twice they've run that play. They've run the little option, the pitch to Hansbart. Now, let me tell you something. You are going to see the wide receiver come and go in between those two eventually, and they'll run the reverse off of that. Mm -hmm. A gain of 12 by Hansbart, but now the penalty tacked on. They move it all the way down to the 28-yard line. Jones and Hansbart in the backfield. Here's Byron. Loses the ball for a moment. And Texas Tech saying that he got it back, and the official saying he was down. Mario Smith was in there on the stop. 
Mario Smith stoned him. I mean, just flat out. It was a slobber knocker, and the ball came loose. Man's part get, did get it back. But I'm telling you, that just the head contact forced that ball out. Like pressure in a cork. He will hit you. We told you. They use him almost like a linebacker. Here he comes up, boom. Just forces that ball out with the velocity of the hit. Here's Lethridge to the end zone. Sheldon Bass, the intended receiver. You hit a guy that quickly with that much power, that can cause problems. What Smith, he's only 190 pounds, but he hits you with some force. Sheldon Bass, who had a heck of a year two years ago, was a leading receiver for Texas Tech, but then dislocated a collarbone and missed last season. Terry, are you surprised that here we are now with just nine minutes left in the half and it's only a 7-3 ball game? 50, Two explosive offenses. 55 and 54 points in the bowl games last year. <laughs> and it's 7-3 with nine minutes plus remaining here in the first half. Both have terrific defenses, though. Three receivers to the far side on third and eight. Lethridge goes down. Well, look who 42, it is. 42, Mark Simino. Simino came on a blitz, read the play immediately. His key went away. He followed through the hole. Bingo. Red shirt freshman. Watch 42. Here he comes. His key goes away. He's on Lethridge all the way. That's quickness. You talk about an attack defense, a go get you type of defense. That's it. Loss of five. So that moves him back to the 31 yard line. A huge play. And it brings up fourth and 13. So Rogers on for a try from 48 yards. He's already hit a 53 yarder. Plenty long enough, but he hooked it. Just outside the upright. The 48 yard try, no good from Tony Rogers. And Kansas State holding on to the 7-3 lead. We'll be back. Next Saturday, a college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Regional action beginning at 11 a.m. Central. You will see the Spartans of Michigan State battling number one Nebraska. Then at 2.30 Central, you can catch TCU taking on Oklahoma, a host of other games available on pay-per-view as well. So check with your local cable operator. It's next Saturday on ABC Sports College Football. The season well underway. 8.27 left here until halftime. First and 10 at the 31. Kavanaugh up top for Rocket. Again, a lot of contact on the near sideline, but no flag. Boy, there is no question. Darwin Brown, another freshman, number three, actually pushed off. And Lockett talking about it right now, asking for a flag. All right, watch this. You got a freshman working on Lockett. Here they go. You cannot bang him or bump him after five yards. Look at this. He's all over him. Well, I don't know. That's not a You know what? It, it looked more flagrant when it happened originally. Well, the left arm was in there, and we saw it earlier. Corey Turner with his right arm. But it, there wasn't a whole lot of meaningful contact there. You're right. That's a good no call. Kavanaugh now 5 of 10 for 62 yards. Lockett has caught 3 for 45, and this one off his hands. In fact, it was tipped twice. There's a flag back at the 30-yard line. You can have all the incidental contact you want on a play like that. That defensive player has as much right to that ball as the uh, the offensive player. And, you know, I mentioned that five, or that's not right. But what they do is they go back and forth. You can't flagrantly push. You can't gain an advantage with an arm. Well, that's the key, though, Timmy, the arm. I mean, it's one thing to have contact, but it, both right. have used the, the arm. And in that one, I think that's a good no call. Illegal motion against the offense. Penalty is declined. It'll be third down. The illegal motion declined, so it brings up third and ten. Do you see some of the other scores from around the country? Mike Lawrence, the lone setback. Throws the intended receiver Justin Swift. Jane Johnson was there 
on the coverage, but good coverage in the secondary that time for Texas Tech. I think Cavanaugh was a little bit confused by what Texas Tech did. They only had three down linemen since it was uh, such a situation, a long yardage situation. They backed off their linebackers to get into pass coverage and almost a prevent scheme. So it brings up fourth and ten, James Garcia. This punt, a good one. Matt DeBuck back at the 20 yard line with a fair catch and a punt of 48 yards by Garcia. No return with a fair catch. What we thought was going to be a game of high scoring is 7 to 3, Kansas State. You have to go back 10 years for the last matchup between these two teams. In the first half, a 46-yard touchdown pass to John Williams of Kansas State, and the Wildcats took a 7-6 lead, but Texas Tech exploded for 35 in the second half. Billy Joel Tolliver's touchdown pass to Wayne Walker and a 41-7 win by Texas Tech. In fact, the last two times these two teams have met, Texas Tech has broken passing records in each of those games. So first and 10 at the 21 for the Red Raiders. Hands part to the near sideline. Outside to the 27-yard line, gain of about four, and we step away. Go to New York to check in with John Saunders. John? Their defense, despite losing two of the top three draft picks, got drives back to Clarence Williams. The fumble is recovered by drives back, but Steve Willis pounces on him in the end zone for the safety, and it's 7-2 Illinois now on the board. Terry. All right, John, so the Illini leading in that Big Ten matchup. Well, all the games within conferences to open up the season. Used to be, a, you never saw that. Second and four up to Sheldon Bass and incomplete. You're right, I think it's good. I think Bear Bryant was the one that really used to load up his schedule with some easy players because he liked to build the first several games before he got into conference play. But I think the bigger the game, of course, now money's such an issue. Get television coverage and everything else that goes along with good solid matchups. But the first full day of college football with 19 right bowl games four, waiting for teams. 27 yard line. Sugar Bowl this year waiting for the national champion. Mm-hmm. Coverage on ABC Sports. Well, Texas Tech, no stranger to tough openers last year. Lost to Penn State, but they had the Nittany Lions down. Last second field goal. Third and four. Johnny Hart with a catch and knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line, and I believe he has a first down. He does have the first, or he's at least close to it. No, he does have the first, and again, they're working on Lamar Chapman, the freshman. Just a timing pattern. Watch this. It's all rhythm. Five-step drop. Now it's the out pattern. The freshman, Chapman, gave too much ground, and when Hart squared it off, all Lethbridge had to do was put it right there. Well, you got to feel for Chapman, too. They have worked him throughout the entire first half. I tell you, that's close to another late hit. Uh-huh. So they moved the chains, and now first and 10 at the 34. Lethbridge on the run. Throws and complete up at the 47-yard line, and what a catch. Field Scoville keeping his feet inbounds. Boy, Tech's leading receiver in 95, only had 16 receptions, graduated last spring, but watch this catch. This is phenomenal. Does he drag his feet? He's working on the All-American, Chris Canny. I cannot believe the leverage that they're letting Lethbridge have on the corners. Watch this now. Here it goes. Did he get a foot down? There's the catch. The official's right there looking at it, saying he dragged his feet. Just needs one in. That's one great catch. Mm. And really the first time we've seen them work on Chris Canty. Hanspar gets by one tackler, but not the line. He goes right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Boy, what a catch. You know, Phil Scoville was originally a walk-on. Now here he is. He's a, he's a starter. He's a quality receiver. He graduated last spring, and he's getting ready for medical school. Mm-hmm. His dad, a quarterback at Tech in the 60s. His granddad, a legend. Mr. Cotton Bowl. Yeah, field school for a legend. Actually, Field Scoble came in here as a quarterback, like his dad, John. Former walk on. He's had a great career. Second and nine. A little screen out to Hanspar. 
He gets by Oaks and knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Mario Smith knocked him out. Well, they find ways to get the ball to Byron Hanspart. Pass was complete to number four, Byron Hanspart. Well, I'll tell you, this would be a great right time now, now that you're in Kansas Houston. State territory. Oops. You've run that option a couple times. Now bring that receiver back on the option reverse. Especially as aggressive as Kansas State is. Let mm -hmm. them run themselves out of the play. Pretty good numbers put up last year and in the Cotton Bowl or the uh, Copper Bowl by Byron Hanspart. Third leading returning scorer in the nation. Third down and five at the 47. Jones in motion. Here comes Hanspart trying to turn the corner. Down to the 35 yard line and another first down for Texas Tech. Walker is number four, Byron A gain of 12, and when you get him isolated out on the corner, there's almost no way to stop him. Terry, I am shocked. I am shocked by the way Kansas State and giving up the corners. This guy's so elusive, man. He just makes you miss. If you don't play inside out, that was Candy, the All-American. Mm -hmm. If you don't play inside out, First if you don't break down and come up under control, you're going to run right by him. Boy, he does a great job. Never offers up his entire body. Lord Byron. Byron Hansbard. He gets a break. Adrian Urban in now at tailback. Flags everywhere. Come on, Charlotte! I'll tell you a great story about Byron Hansbart as soon as we get the call here. False start. It's a false start there. against Texas Tech. Still you mentioned that, that Hansbart is a licensed minister. You know, he was recruited by Notre Dame and uh, he was going to Texas A&M. And I was actually driving to Texas A&M when he stopped off at Texas Tech to visit some friends, <laughs> took a shower, and in the shower, he saw some shadows and thought God was telling this is where you're going to school. So somebody asked uh, Spike Dykes the other day, said, is he going to leave and go to the NFL? He says, well, we've been keeping him out of the shower. <laughs> we won't let him take baths. Well, it's turned out uh, just fine at Texas Tech. Play action. Lethridge underneath to the fullback. Jones stopped at the 45-yard line. Travis Oaks read it perfectly. <laughs> Terrific play by Travis Oaks. He was locked on as Shane Dunn just went bottom and made the hit. Tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. Jesper Parnovic at 19 under leads the pack. And, of course, in his professional debut, Tiger Woods at 4 under. He was 2 over on his round today. He's 15 shots back. Our coverage begins at 3 Central here on ABC Sports. What a story that is, huh? Tiger how, Woods. How strong is that? 67-69 today was 2 over. Lethridge underneath, almost picked off. Mario Smith had it in his hand. Matt DeBuck, the intended receiver, but Mario Smith, who had two interceptions in the Holiday Bowl last year. Boy, he read it. He just didn't hang on to it. He sure did. Look at him up there, number four. He was playing free. The corners were in man coverage. A little bit of a combo. He read it, broke the ball nicely. Probably should have had the pick. Yeah, you know, if you listen... Up in the booth to Bob Cope, the defensive coordinator. He'll probably say, come on, Mario, you got to make that interception. The 10th play of the drive coming up. And the ball resting on the 44. The third and a whole lot now, third and 19. Timeout, Kansas State. Timeout, Kansas State. Terry, earlier you mentioned that uh, defensive coordinator Bobby Stoops left for Florida. And now Bob Cope comes in, and he was coaching Baylor. And he held Texas Tech last year to seven points. Number one defense in the country, Kansas State. Let's go to John Saunders in New York. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll have the scores and highlights. Plus, I'll be joined by my new partner, Todd Blackledge, who's breaking down tape already as we speak. And he'll have a closer look at the top five. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. Putting John and Todd, Todd putting waiting Todd, in the wings. Putting Todd in, to work in the back room there. <laughs> well, of all the scores, highlights, don't forget, later on at 6.30 Central Time, the Pitt Panthers trying to come back from that 21-0 defeat last year to the Mountaineers, West Virginia, and Pitt at 6.30 on ESPN. All day long. All you need is college football. And Colorado, it's not an experience.
explosive offense. Is it 24 to nothing now in the second? Wow. Boy, that number two touchdown passes. Hey! Had that one yard team Third down, 19. earlier in the game. 24 yard line. Boy, the Big 12, Tim, and I know we'll talk about it more, but look at Colorado and what they're doing. Two time defending national champion Nebraska. You go up and down the line in both the north and the south. It's an incredible conference this year. Yep. Lethridge pulled out of there, and the ball didn't come back from Jay Pugh. Zebby was ready for the ball, but Jay wasn't ready to give it to him. There's the count. There goes Lethridge, and the ball never comes. Now the rest of the line moved as well, so you got to believe Jay was maybe one off on his count. You know, Kevin Ward started last the last seven games last year at center. But Jay Pugh came back in better shape, had a better camp, was more consistent, won the job. A little confusion on that last play, however. Well, it's third and 24 now. Lethridge, he's going down in the backfield, so is his helmet. All right, but see where he went down is not where they're going to mark the ball. They're going to mark it back where his helmet came off. It's a brand new rule this year. Wherever a ball carrier's helmet comes off, that's where the ball is dead. That's where it's marked. Thad Swayzer, the man who got there. The fourth sack of the afternoon. Just came off that back side. We saw it earlier. Nobody picked up Swayzer. Now, see, he got some yardage back. But instead of that, with the new rule, they put it back at the at the 42. He never did see him coming. He does feel him here when he turns. Boom, marked the ball right there. So fourth and 30, Texas Tech having to punt it away. Jeremy Hernandez, Chris Canny back in his own 16. And out to the 23, that's where Kansas State will start their next drive. A punt of 42 yards by Hernandez and a return of seven. Chris Canny, we talked earlier, the All-American defensive back. He had eight interceptions a year ago. That was tied for tops in the country. And this year, using him on offense as well. I'm surprised they have not used him more offensively. I'm surprised they haven't gone to him offensively. Such a threat every time he touches it. There was so much talk last year whether Candy was going to come out and go to the National Football League. And uh, that was after his sophomore season. I know Ron Lynn of the Washington Redskins thinks so highly of him. But he stayed, and uh, now they're using him more and more. A lot like Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. Mike Lawrence trying the left side. Won't get anywhere. Balls ahead for maybe a yard. That stingy defensive front of Texas Tech when they bring seven and eight people up front. Hey, don't be surprised if they make a change here now and they give Lawrence a break and get Marlon Charles in there. They think Charles is more of a breakaway threat. Charles also has got a little bit more diversity to his game. It's really been impressive in practice. He's got everybody's attention in the spring game when he ran for 114 yards. In five games last year, there's Marlin, number 21, 124 yards on the year. Second and eight, Kavanaugh with a lot of time this time. Out to his tight end, Justin Swift, and a lot of room. For the 42-yard line of Texas Tech. Justin Swift, 6'4", 245 pounds. He's a sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas, and a gain of 32. And as if he's not big enough, you know, he was a 6'6 high jumper in high school. This is something that Kansas State has not done very much of in the past. Use their tight end, get him involved, use him as a receiver rather than a blocker. They dragged him all the way across. Texas Tech hadn't seen much of that from Kansas State, didn't expect it. He cleared the linebackers and was wide open. So 3.42 and counting here until halftime. And Kansas State driving now inside Texas Tech territory at the 42. Goosby and Lawrence in the honor. Here's Lawrence. Good gain up to a 36 yard line. I think the running game is such a huge key for Kansas State, only averaging three and a half yards per carry last year. And it has to work to take the pressure off of Lockett, the wide receiver. And there is a player injured right now, Cody Patton. 
defensive tackle. You know, Terry, talking about how important that running game is for Kansas State, and really they didn't have that much success last no. year. But uh, Lawrence now has 10 carries and 22 yards. That's not a great percentage, so they, they aren't getting what they should out of their running game, and that, I think, is hampering the passing game, and consequently, they only have seven points. Now, last year they averaged about 230 yards in the air and 172 on the ground. That was last in the Big Eight. Cody Patton made the tackle on that last play, and he's the man down, big number 99. I think they're working on his right leg. Two hundred eighty pound guys, big. There he is right here. Now watch what happens to him. Let's erase that. Watch the play develop and see if we can pick up how he got hurt. Still in the chase. Oh, I see his own guy caught him. Mm -hmm. Who was that? It looks like Jody Brown, the safety, the rover, number 30, actually came in and his body weight forced him in, in, and uh, motion forced him into his leg. Rolled up on his ankle. Yeah, it looked like he may have come down on his ankle. This is a small defensive front and a small defense anyway. Cody Patton going 279 pounds, a big guy. But overall, they rely on uh, bringing more men up to the line of scrimmage. And against a, an offensive line like Kansas State, they can ill afford to lose some people. Awfully quick, too. They rely on pressure, as you said. And they've been successful doing that. So Cody McGuire will come into the game and replace Cody Seven Patton, down, nose five, tackle. 37-yard line. Second and five at the 37. Dean in motion. Kavanaugh up top to Swift and through his hands. He had it at the 15 but couldn't hold on. Dean Johnson on the coverage. And that's a ball that I'm sure Justin Swift would say I want back. Oh, there is no question about it. Dane Johnson can take credit of that, but he was beaten coming from his free safety spot that ball has to be caught Justin Swift had it took his eye off of it and dropped it it's a well designed play they moved everybody to the left actually had some motion in that direction and then sent the tight end Swift on a little flag pattern how tough is that to jog over to the sideline after you, you drop one of those just had the big game on the previous it's all right you just go to the other side <laughs> third and five Kevin all over the middle complete to Anderson the 20 and down to the 16 yard line. So moves to Andre Anderson after the catch. A gain of 21. Watch Andre Anderson, 25. He's a Florida kid from West Palm. Went to the same high school as Anthony Carter and broke all his records. Now watch this a little shake of the hips. Boom. Get through there and pick up a few extra yards. He's a nice looking receiver. How tough must it be to get a guy from West Palm Beach to come to Manhattan, Kansas? That's a culture shock. A little different environment. Lawrence tripped up behind the line of scrimmage, may have battled his way back to the line. But that's about it. Well, the lure of Big 12 football is what brings him. Uh, you're right about that. That's quite a lure. Most powerful conference in the country. I really believe that. Folks in the SEC would argue with you, I guess, but uh, I think you're probably right when you look at... Well, the numbers, Terry, speak for themselves when you have seven teams in the top 25 and seven bowl teams last year, and the defending national champion, and hadn't won, I mean, hadn't lost a game in 25 outings. Washington State now on the board against Colorado. Second and 11 for Kavanaugh. Up to the end zone, lock it wide open, and he overthrew him. Tony Darden, the cornerback, had fallen down. That's one Kavanaugh now is really frustrated about. Can't believe he missed the throw. Watch this. Now watch Darden, number 11, will fall on the break. Stumbles right here and goes down. Lockett is wide open. All you have to do is just float the ball out there because there's nobody around him. Kavanaugh just shook his head and looked at the sky. Mm. It's one of those passes, though, 
the timing pattern that you throw sometimes before the before break the is break. even made. So yeah, good point. Kavanaugh didn't even know that Darden had fallen down. So it brings up a critical third down, third and 11 at the 17. And Kavanaugh wants to talk things over with Bill Snyder. He got caught in a time jam, looked at the play clock. It was down to four rather than take a penalty down here. Inside the 25, I mean, inside the 20, you want to stop that clock and take a timeout. And let's take you down to the third member of our crew, Lewis Johnson. Lewis? All right, Terry, thank you. A sad situation down here on the Texas Tech sideline. Look at big Cody Patton, number 99. He is absolutely in tears. At the moment, trainers are putting an air cast on his right ankle. I cannot confirm that it's broken or what have you, but it does not look good. The look on his face is though his season could be in jeopardy, and, and it's really unfortunate to see that happen today, so early in the season, guys. All right, Lewis. Uh, Cody Patton making a tackle earlier in this drive by Kansas State, and his own teammate falling on that right ankle. I mean, it's one of those things as a football player, too. No matter how much you practice, two-a-days, the grueling aspect of that. But game speed is just nothing like practice speed, is it? I no. mean, the it just no. becomes so much quicker when you actually go out there and play your first game. That's a good point. Everything is quicker. Everything changes so dramatically when you do play that game. But that was just a freak accident. I mean, Jody Brown rolled up on it. He, too, was trying to get into play. Kansas State with 15 rushing yards and 115 in the air. You look at that drive that they are currently on. Third down and 11. Coming out over the middle to Jimmy D. Hurdles and into the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. to the end zone. How pretty was that screen set up? Actually, the down linemen on defense were telling their linebackers with their hands, back up, back up. Well, they backed so far out of there, and the offensive line released. Dean just came right underneath. Jamie Ream now on for the extra point of freshman out of Wichita. In for the injured Martin Ramatica. It is 14 to 3 Kansas State over Texas Tech with a minute 34 left here in the first half and an important and very impressive drive by the Wildcats. Boy, how pretty was that touchdown? My, my, my. the defensive line guys are telling their linebackers to back up go ahead and roll it you see them they're, they're using their arms telling them to back up they do they run out now stop it right there all these guys releasing look at this they've got them locked up everywhere now they bring in dean underneath and then he cuts it back perfect play the offensive line made this by releasing coming out making their blocks everybody hitting somebody and look at this now he's got a caravan just go over the big guys and into the end zone that's about as well designed as a flanker underneath screen middle screen as you're going to see so it's 14-3, to three. the Wildcats up on Texas Tech, and for much of the first half, it seemed to me that Texas Tech had confidence, had momentum, and all of a sudden, they're down 14-3. to three. Robertson watches it go out of bounds, and we'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. I tell you what, that's great discipline by him not trying to field that ball on the sidelines because as soon as a ball goes out of bounds before it goes past the pylon, they have the choice. Move it right out to the 35, get great field position, and start your offense up there. Cody Patton going off and heading to the locker room. They have placed the air cast on his right leg, his right ankle that was injured. And we can have a look. Cody Patton from Electra, Texas, playing against some of his high school teammates. Now there are 13 players from the state of Texas on this Kansas State roster. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, pretty interesting. Byron Hanspar with a big hole. 
across midfield and out of bounds at the 47. Still time left in the first half. A gain of 19. Still plenty of time. You're right. 126 to go in the half. It's 14 to 3, Kansas State. Texas Tech now just cannot panic. Zebby Lethridge has to get a good drive, and he has to get some points on the board here and melt as much of that clock in doing so as he can. Well, a good first down play when you look at the timeouts remaining. In motion is Mitchell. Straight drop to Sheldon Bass. A nice catch behind him. And a first down at the 27-yard line. Clyde Johnson on the coverage, but Bass with a ball that was thrown just behind him. Pretty he nice did. catch. He did, but I give uh, Zebby a lot of credit, too, because he released the ball very, very quickly when he saw that he was in the seam and open. And then Bass going behind him to make the catch. Now they go to no huddle here. Ball on the 26-yard line. Minute 16 and count. Lethridge out to Mitchell. Trying to get outside, and he gets out to the 18-yard line, but inbounds and just shy of the first down. About two yards shy of the first down. Nice play by Mario Smith. It was a nice play by Mario Smith to make the stop one-on-one. -on -one. But again, Lethridge with that very quick release. Boy, when he sees you open, he plants and gets it there in a hurry. Again, no huddle for the Red Raiders. Under a minute. Play being called at the line. Lethridge up top to the corner. And too far for Field Scoble. That is a nice matchup, isn't it? That's Field Scoble and Chris Canny working one-on-one -on -one with the All-American. Neither one is a tall guy. You've got Scoble at 5'11", Canny at 5'10", they're challenging him, it's one-on-one. -on -one. That ball was in the air way before he even looked. It was a timing pattern. Lethridge just put it in the air, but it led him too much to the outside. See, Canny never did look back. Lead him a little bit inside and try to use your body, just like in basketball, to shield him out and make the catch. Three receivers to the near side on third and two. Lethridge with the option. Hands spot. Didn't get there, I don't believe. May have gained a yard, Travis Oaks, among others who they met him first. Call timeout, they need a timeout there, they've got it now. They stopped the clock with 30 seconds left. I'm sure Spike Dykes will want a, uh, a good look and tell you how far are we from the first down marker. Right now it looks like a long two yards. Well, it is certainly more than a yard. As that is... Clyde Johnson, the free safety down on the turf. Boy, Clyde Johnson. Clyde Johnson came in at the same time as Bill Snyder in 1988. Here he is, number uh, seven. A second quarter score for the Had a player fall on him late right there. Clyde Johnson, he came into uh, Kansas State in 1988. It's not that he's, he's been here that long. But the team had lost 14 games, and he finally got frustrated and left, went and got into the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. In the Marines, did play some football, seven-on-seven seven for his battalion. Came back, wanted to get his degree, didn't want to lose the credits he had accrued. So he says, hey, coach, you mind if I come back and play a little football? He did say it wasn't as fast as he was when he left, but he's getting it back now, and he's up and he's off the field. But quite a story. Spent time in the Marines, came back for his degree, and he's playing football again. He's 26 years old. He's stationed in Japan, Korea. California, North Carolina, all over the place, and uh, now back in Manhattan playing college football. The Little Apple, <laughs> Manhattan, Kansas. There's Bob Cope. Now, Spike Dykes took a pretty good look at uh, how far he had to go for the first down. He said, well, it's down two. I think what we're going to do is we're going to try for a field goal and get three more on the board. They're one for three today, field goals. Tony Rogers on for what would be a 35-yard field goal. He hit a 53-yarder earlier in the game. And a fake inside to Sammy Morris, who has the first down and inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. How about that? That's a great play by Spike Dykes. You know, if on defense, anytime you're down that low, you've got to be thinking, watch the fake. Clock stops at 24 seconds. I was looking how they could pull off the fake. There was nobody in the backfield other than the holder and the kicker. They brought him off the wing. See him slide in there? Very nicely done. Sammy, Sammy Morris, Morris, the red shirt freshman out of San Antonio. Field Scoble, the holder, with a little pass. So Spike Dykes, the fake field goal. And here's Lethridge. To the end zone and out of bounds. 
Donnie Hart, the intended Pass receiver. Pass intended for number 82, Donnie Hart. Incomplete. Could not keep his feet in bounds. Side judge saw him the first time, said, yeah, you got a foot in. Looked at him this time and said, no, watch it. Working on Candy, gets the push, gets to the outside, pass is well thrown. Now watch this. He needs one foot. I'll tell you, it looks I good to me. I thought he had two in. That looks good to me, let alone one. Unless his toes were on that white, white area. From this angle, it looks good. And Donnie upset on the sideline. He thought he had a touchdown. Seven seconds left. Mitchell in motion. Lethridge over the middle and a lot of contact incomplete. Pass intended for Sheldon Bass. Boy, Denmark knocked him, almost knocked him down in the secondary. He had a hole of him, didn't he? And no call. Sheldon Bass comes over talking now. That stops the clock with four seconds, Terry. They'll have one last shot at the end zone. Well, it's third and nine, third and goal at the nine. And on comes Rodgers. And I'll guarantee you this will not be a fake. 26-yard <laughs> attempt. Only Rodgers is blocked. The field goal try blocked by Kansas State. Number 83. Kevin Walker. Lockett blocks the field goal here at the end of the first half. What a way to end the first half of the first game in Big 12 history. He just never got this ball up, kept it low, Lockett got high. Keep them off the board. Valvoline Halftime 96 coming up next. It is 14-3 Kansas State. football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. And McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Stay tuned for Valvoline Halftime 96. Welcome back to KSU Stadium here in Manhattan, Kansas. Kansas State leading 14 to three and the final play of the first half, spectacular one by Kevin Lockett. The take blocked a, field goal, Timmy. Take a look at it, here he is right here. That's Kevin Lockett, 83. Now he's used as a safety, he'll come and he'll jump and watch him get up. He has a 40 inch vertical jump and blocks the field goal. Now let me put that in perspective, a 40 inch vertical jump. David Thompson, one of the all time great basketball players in, in ever mm -hmm. with a, and a jumper had a 42 inch vertical jump. Kevin Lockett with a 40 inch vertical jump. Not unlike that of my partners, Tim Brandt, <laughs> right in that area. So it's 14 to three, Jared Greaser getting us underway here in the second half. Andre Anderson, about nine yards deep in his end zone, goes to one knee, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And it's That's amazing. You look at the first half stats, and it seems that Texas Tech has dominated this game, but they trail. Well, they have dominated. Look at the number of plays. Look at the first downs compared to Kansas State. Look at the rushing yards. This is in 15 plays, too. 15 plays, 15 yards. Passing yards all the way down the line. Here's the big thing right here. Turnovers. Two turnovers, three missed field goals. That's been the difference in this ballgame. Texas Tech getting it done on the ground as well. Byron Hanspart with 86 yards in the first half. Kansas State has yet to get it done on the ground. You mentioned the 15 yards and 15 carries. So it's first and 10 at the 20. Mike Lawrence stopped in the backfield. I mean, he was ball met by Tony Daniels as soon as he had the ball. Tackle by number 86, Tony, Tony Daniels. Daniels having a great football game. He's been in a lot of plays, especially down deep, down in short yardage situations. He's pinching on the corners. Here he comes through freely. Watch big number 86 come through. The guy's 6'5", 250 pounds, but he runs like a tailback, and he'll hit you. Mm. I mean, just downright rattle your fillings. Now, the knee injury last year, but a strong start to this year. You know what's unbelievable? Kansas State's longest run of the day is five yards. They lost three on the last play over the middle caught at the 20 yard line. That's Kevin Lockett. Pass was complete to number eight. But he paid for it. Robert Johnson was there and hit him hard. Tackle by number seven, Robert Johnson. 
That's a gain of about four yards. Johnson, a senior out of Lubbock, Texas. Daniels goes out of the ball game. I don't know if he's a little bit shaken up. Third down nine, 21 yard line. Come on, let's pick it up. Oh, he's got a cramp. Tony Daniels has a cramp, so he's out. Keith Cumbry comes in. The numbers on Kavanaugh. Out of the shotgun. A long time now under pressure, and he goes down at the 13-yard line. Eric Butler with the blitz. Trying to fill the void, he did. Got just enough of Kavanaugh to take him down. Great defensive series for Texas Tech. Butler, a backup last year to Zach Thomas, one of the great players at Texas Tech, and watch how quickly he gets there. I'll tell you what, watch number 48 straight up the middle. The guy lost 25 pounds from last year because he said he wanted to get more agile and quicker. He has. Here's a punt to the 40. Dane Johnson looking for room to have some. A tough run up to the 49-yard line. Dane Johnson's having a tough time holding on to the ball today. He fumbled one inside the 10-yard line. Almost fumbled this one. Bobbled it for a second. A 47-yard punt by Jeremy Hernandez and the return of seven yards. Watch him bobble it, though, at the beginning. Well, first time he had the sun in his eyes. This time he's got his back to the sun, so I don't know what caused the problem. It looked like he let the ball get in too close, hit his chest plate, and bounced away, but he did make it. He made a fine return on it. Great field position for Texas Tech to start first the series. Well, a long drive that ended the first half, but they got nothing out of it. As Lockett blocked the field goal. Lethbridge on the roll. Incomplete. The intended receiver, Matt DeBuck. 5'8", 173 pounds out of Fort Lauderdale. One of those small guys that... You hate to try to cover. You, you, hard to stay with, but also a tough little guy. You know, I know Spike Dykes, the head coach of Texas Tech. And he's a guy that went into that locker room, and he told these guys, you know, you dominated that first half. A couple big plays, and you, you squandered some opportunities. Now come back, be patient. We can win this football game, but we have to get after him. 141 yards in the air to this point by Lethbridge. Hands part, fumbles, and gets it back at midfield. Four, and fortunate that it bounced right back up into his hand. Yeah, but you see Hansbart's going back and he's touching his chest. He's telling him the handoff was too high and hit his chest plate. Watch where he gives him the ball. Boom! Right above the uh, Texas Tech number there. Hits his shoulder pads underneath the chest plate and bounces right off. He went back and he told Zebby Lethridge about it too. Well, you expect mistakes early in the season, first game of the year, but not with those two fellas. They've been together for a while now. Lethridge and Hansbart. There was motion. Lethridge on the run. Flags everywhere. And overthrows the intended receiver. Texas Tech killing itself with mistakes, penalties. And here, uh, another penalty. Like Stacy Mitchell may have been in motion. Legal procedure, and they'll back them up. Spike Dykes watched his team throughout the first half have a number of opportunities. The three field goals that were missed, one of them blocked. And that one coming at the end of the first half. Penalty is declined, be fourth down. Well, what a job he's done at Texas Tech. Three consecutive bowl games, five straight seasons of no lower than second place in the Southwest Conference. Good coach. Won their last four games last year, seven of their last eight. There's Chris Canny back deep to receive this punt. Jeremy Hernandez, the punter, which was a question mark going into this game. He gets the duties. Low line drive kick and the fair catch called for at the 13-yard line by Canny. Looked like he may have had some room, but that's where Kansas State will start the next drive. Number one, Nebraska hosts Michigan State, or Georgia Tech meets NC State. They kick off at noon Eastern in game one of a doubleheader next Saturday on ABC's College Football. And next Saturday, folks in this area will see Michigan State and Nebraska. And TCU taking on Oklahoma. Your game's next week on ABC Sports. Here's Mike Lawrence looking for room over the left side up to the 19-yard line. Pretty good game as Dane Johnson was finally there to bring him down. 
Boy, look at Colorado today. 31 to 6 over Washington State. Detmer having a big day, three touchdown passes and a touchdown run and putting himself right back into that Heisman picture, which he was before he broke his, uh, or he had that knee injury. Yeah, he, he has to be thinking, finally, my time has come, and it's time for a good year, healthy year as well. Right. I understand he's worked very, very hard to rehab that, that injury. Gain of five in the first play, so it's second and five at the 19th. The pitch out to Lawrence. His way up to the 29 and may have a first down. Very close to a first down. Got a favorable mark. They'll give him the first down. They'll mark, move the chains, and that's the uh, first time we've seen signs of a strong running attack. And he mentioned the longest run from scrimmage in the first half. Five yards for Kansas State, and they had 15 carries for 15 yards. So they open up here on this drive with a first down, and they're up to the 25-yard line. A couple of good blocks by Brian Goolsby, the fullback, on those two plays. Play action, Kavanaugh with time. Over the middle, deep to lock it, but broken up. Corey Turner was there on the coverage. Corey Turner could not have played that any better. That is perfect defense. Watch the isolation on this. All right, here comes Lockett, then the break. Now, when he makes the break to the inside, Turner gets to him, gets right on his hip. Look at that, the hip pocket. Now, plays the ball, watch his left hand. Just bat it away. That is as well as you can play a ball as a defensive back. Boy, just a sophomore. He's only 5'9", inexperienced. Only broke up one pass last year, but he had a great spring, great fall, and that was a terrific play. After that play, though, Tony Daniels, the defensive end, limped off once again to the sideline. Here's Mike Lawrence, straight ahead. May have fallen ahead for a yard or so. Eric Butler again in on the tackle. You know, Daniels is having cramp problems in his legs, and as I look down on the field, I see Tony Darden, number 11, who's a defensive back for Texas Tech. He, too, has been reaching for his calves, trying to stretch his, his feet because he's having cramps in his, his calves. It is a hot afternoon, and these guys have played a lot of plays. It was 85 degrees when we started, but that was the temperature here in the stadium. On the field, it was most likely much hotter than that. Here's Kavanaugh. Throws and incomplete. Ryan Jackson, the intended receiver, and just out of his grasp. And that will bring up fourth down. Jackson, a sophomore out of Hayes, Kansas. Did not have a catch in 95, but a great receiver in high school. Well, that's a good defensive series for Texas Tech here. This ball almost picked off. Should have been caught. Ball was pretty well thrown and certainly catchable. And whistles blow as James Garcia was set to punt away. See the penalties mounting now. The ball was snapped before they're ready for play. Five-yard penalty. Now tonight on ABC, part one of the television event of last season is back. The Beatles Anthology, featuring the legendary group's own story in their own words. The Beatles Anthology tonight on ABC right after second Noah. See that last year, Timmy? No, I never did. Very good. Garcia with the punt. Boy, it's a good one. High good kick. Dane Johnson at the 32. And he is wrapped up at the 35-yard line. A punt of 48 yards. Johnson brings it back four yards. A tackle made by Chris Canty. And we'll step away. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the all-new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. And the United States Postal Service. Well, more than 42,000 on hand, and that is exactly what KSU Stadium holds. A better than capacity crowd here for the first Big 12 game in history. First and 10 at the 35 for Texas Tech. a long count this time and here's Byron Hanspar breaking to the right side and to the outside 
a first down and more up to the 47 yard line of Kansas State and a look at the speed outside of Byron Anspark. Not only the speed but how about the balance the guy picks up 19 yards and almost all of those were he did it on his own breaking tackles and, and moving some things. Now if you look at the linebackers you're looking at Oaks number 50 he's got to come up and make this play. Well they just crush him. Hansbart gets through there. I mean uh, Hansbart gets through that hole and then once he gets to the outside he breaks two three tackles. JT Sprouse the man who was in for Casey Jones who was not brought here to Manhattan because of an eligibility question. Big block by Sprouse. Here's Hansbart again finding room and a big gain of about eight yards inside to the 38 yard line. Boy they've got that thing going now. Put Hans, Hansbart on the outside. He comes up limping this time though. Hansbart will go out and Adrian Irvin number 22 the junior college transfer will come into the ball game. And Timmy we mentioned Casey Jones in the eligibility question. Jerome Lang if you look at Hansbart come off a defensive tackle is injured right now but there is also a story in the Houston Chronicle that there may have been a violation committed at Texas Tech because of his taking a correspondence course and them using that to gain his eligibility. So a big question mark on the defensive front, too. Adrian Irvin in for the carry. And across the 35 to the 34. So a first down again. Dimitri Denmark. Terry, Terry, you know it's been a tumultuous year for Texas Tech. As a matter of fact, there were distractions in the offseason, the NCAA probe into the cheating allegations, the school president and the athletic director departed, the coach's uh, triple bypass surgery, and yesterday Spike showed us his scar from that. It's been just a tumultuous offseason, then the Lang situation now breaking and is being reported, so it's, it's, it's really been crazy. First down at the 35. Jones in motion. Up top and incomplete. Donnie Hart, the intended receiver. Denmark was there and had him covered well. Six straight incomplete passes now for Zebby Lethridge. Looking down on the Texas Tech sideline, and Hanspart is on the ground, and the trainers are working on his ankle. I think his tape is too tight because it looks like they're cutting off the tape on his ankle. Let's go quickly to Lewis Johnson for a report. Yeah, guys, I've been watching Brian Hansford's face, and he's not wincing in pain at all. I think he really just wants the trainers to take off that old tape, retape him again so he can get back in the game. Uh, doesn't look any more serious than that. All right, Lewis, second and ten to pass out to Stacy Mitchell. Overthrown just a bit. Lamar Chapman on the coverage. Yeah, the way he came out of the ball game, it looked like, you know, he was yelling to the trainers to come over, not for injury, but hey, let's relieve some of the pressure on this tape. This ankle's taped too tightly. It's cutting off my circulation. I think it was retaped at halftime, perhaps, because during the first half, it was fine. Yeah, didn't have any problems. Came out, uh -huh. he, he evidently had it tightened at, at halftime, and it was too tight. He was pulling on the arch of his foot, perhaps. 113 yards on the afternoon. Third and ten for Texas Tech. Straight drop out to Jones who falls down at the 33-yard line. They need to get all the way down to the 24. Zebby are well short. You know, Zebby's now having problems with his calves. Look at him trying to get off the field. He's barely making it. We told you the heat would become a factor here in the second half. It obviously has. A lot of the Texas Tech players suffering from cramps in their uh, calves. Now, this is a fairly new turf. We were down there yesterday and was still coming off on your shoes. I'm not sure that would have anything to do with it. I think the heat probably more of a factor. But here's Tony Rogers on for a 50-yard field goal try. Plenty of leg, but well wide. Boy, Texas Tech now one for four in the field goal department, and it's not like they don't have the strength. One for five now after this one. I mean, they've got plenty of leg on these kicks, but the aimer's off. So it is still 14 to three, Kansas State. Next Saturday, a college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Michigan State taking on Nebraska. That's the one you will see. That's at 11 a.m. Central Time. And then TCU taking on Oklahoma at 2.30 Central Time. A lot of other games available on pay-per-view, so make sure you call your local cable operator. See which ones are available in your area. Next Saturday on ABC Sports. Mike Lawrence. 
going nowhere. Behind the line of scrimmage, wrapped up at the 30 by Clyde Johnson. Excuse me. Tackled by number 37, Anthony By number 37, Anthony Armour, along with Robert Johnson. And Timmy, you know, you look at this game, 734 and counting in the third, and it's been an odd game with the explosive offenses and the missed field goals by Texas Tech. Yeah, they've squandered all kinds of opportunities today. There's no question but the fact uh, they, they've outplayed or outdistanced them statistically anyway over Texas, uh, over Kansas State. Texas Tech hadn't been able to capitalize. Sony Cavazos, the backup quarterback, now warming up on the sideline. Kavanaugh hit as he throws, and Lockett was out there. But pressure by Jody Brown on the blitz. Zebby Lethridge suffering from cramps in his calves. That's becoming a major story. We've seen Tony Daniels. We've seen uh, Lethridge. We've even seen Lockett go down and test their calves because of cramps, because of the heat, hard surface. You now you would think geographically, too, that the kids from Texas be used to the heat. But actually, they got off the plane yesterday, came here and practiced, and they really were talking about that, how hot it was here in Manhattan. Zebby looks to be OK. Checks off at the line of scrimmage. Texas Tech showing blitz, backs off. J.D. with the catch at the 47. And there may have been a face mask. I'm not sure. They didn't throw the flag. No call, but there definitely was. Should have been a five-yarder. Robert Johnson got a piece of the face mask. Unintentional. Boy, Texas Tech was in a zone. Johnson was in position to make the play, but never saw the receiver come behind him in that area. Perfect throw, too, by Kavanaugh. Gain of 19. 19, Timmy, on the play. Jimmy Dean, the receiver, the senior out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Watch this. Here's after the catch. Here's the squatch at the uh, face mask. First down and 10, Kansas State. 48-yard line. Tough angle to see that. Certainly not intentional. Wasn't there long. First down at the 48. Over the middle, rocket. Inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. His fifth catch of the afternoon, Dwayne Price, the man he was working on. Boy, Lockett ought to go over right now and shake hands with Andre uh, John Anderson. Watch this. It's almost like a pick play. Here come the two receivers. Now they're crisscross. Boom, there's the pick. Comes underneath. That's not a pick. That's not legal. That's just a rub off. Comes underneath. Nicely designed pattern. And the completion, Kavanaugh, right on target. He's found a rhythm here all of a sudden. Well, they move the chains again. Another first down. And now the ball resting at the 38-yard line. Kavanaugh heating up. 11 for 23 now in the afternoon. Straight drop. Flushed out, and down he goes. At the 47, Eric Butler. We've called his name often here in the second half. Mike Lawrence was wide open. Nobody picked him up. Corey Turner was out there by himself. He had Lockett and Lawrence. He could only cover one, and Kavanaugh never saw him. All right, watch the right hand of your screen. Down, 19, Number 20. Yard line. He went out all by himself. Kavanaugh's looking to the right and gets caught from behind. A loss of 10 on the play. Texas Tech got away with one there. There was a breakdown defensively. Nobody even saw Lawrence. Lawrence, the lone setback now. to time out. He didn't like what he saw on the other side. He didn't like what he saw. He was going to change the play, started to aud audibleize, and looked up, and there was three on the play clock. He says, I got to get a timeout or there's going to be a delay of game. Just in time. Well, Monday night, the biggest names in the history of professional football share their memories with us in a one-hour primetime special. Join us for ABC's Monday Night Football Mania. It should be a great show. And the Bears taking on Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys. have been waiting for this one for a while in Chicago. The season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. It's Monday night here on ABC Sports. Dave Wonstadt gets a shot at his old team. Dallas had a horrendous preseason. They sure did. And uh, a lot of people think, hey, the Cowboys might go 1-5 or something like that to start the season. I don't know if that'll be the case. Emmitt Smith comes yeah. back Monday night. Go ahead and count on that. He won't be 100% but I guarantee you he'll cause some damage and definitely get their attention just being in the game. Bears with uh, a little bit of an improved defense this year. 
Well, a lot of injuries this afternoon in terms of the heat and cramps and whatnot. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson real quick and check in. Lewis? All right, Terry, thanks. Listen, Brian Hanspart is still wincing down here. He is trying to shuffle back and forth, but I'm not so sure that that right ankle is, is completely okay. He's trying to get it together. Debbie Lethbridge, just a simple cramp, as you mentioned earlier, with the heat. But Cody Patton, this is unfortunate. He has a fractured fibula, so who knows how long he'll be out. Back to you guys. All right, Lewis, Cody Patton, the nose tackle for Texas Tech. Oh, Weiner moved. Todd Weiner, the left tackle, moved too early. So they'll move uh, Kansas State back. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Still target down. Terry, you know, the heat not only causes injuries, not only causes cramping, but a lot of times the heat gets to you where you're not thinking as sharply as you normally do. And there's some mental mistakes being made here. I mean, Kansas State had a nice drive going. All of a sudden, Tide Weiner, who knows better, just jumps out of his position and moves. So they move him back now. It's second down and forever. Second and 24 now at the 48-yard line of Kansas State. That's the fourth penalty for 30 yards for the Wildcats. Kavanaugh. Under pressure. On the run. Out of bounds. Pass Lock it again, the intended receiver. Incomplete. Monte Rager. On the play was number three, Darwin with the Brown. pressure that time in the backfield. You know, Timmy, we've talked about the Big 12, and I know how you feel about it and how, uh, what a conference it's going to be. But, uh, you know, you look at that schedule. Well, when you're Spike Dykes or Bill Snyder, that is a daunting task every week. How about Nebraska now? Nebraska trying to three-peat his national championship, net champions. Now they have to play a championship game. That's you right. remember what happened to Alabama in 1994. They went through 11-0, played Florida in the championship game, lost by a point. The championship is now out the window. Third and 24 for Kavanaugh. Throwing deep over the middle with Jimmy Dean and through his hands covered by three men. Corey Turner was there, Dane Johnson was there, but that That's ball was right on the money. Would have been a tough catch with all the hands, though. Good coverage inside and out, but he still should have made the catch. It came through untouched. You know, Jimmy Dean only had eight receptions last year as a fourth receiver, but he's got that sprinter speed that takes the pressure off Lockett, but he's got to hold on when he has an opportunity like this. If he's going to be a big play guy, I don't care if there are three or four white jerseys around him. If the ball gets through and gets to your hands, you got to make the catch. Garcia with a high punt. The fair catch called for by Johnson at the 12-yard line. And so the Red Raiders will take over at their own 12 with 450 left here in the third. We'll take you up to John Saunders in New York. John? Terry, it's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day. We go to the Michigan-Illinois game. Scott drives back, back to pass. Everyone covered, so he busts it up the middle and then beats the secondary. Good foot speed, 72 yards on the touchdown run. Michigan takes the lead. Right now, it's just a two-point lead in a close one in the Big Ten. That's the Burger King play of the day. Terry. All right, John, so the Big Ten opening day, a tough one there. Michigan with the two-point lead and on first down. Zebby Lethrich keeps it. It's an important drive for Texas Tech. Time now becoming a factor with 430 left in the third quarter. They don't want to go down into the... Uh, the last period, last 15, down by 11. They want to get in this thing right now. Let's make a ball game of it. 421 and counting here in the third. Texas Tech very quickly to the line. Second and five, Lethbridge on the roll. Stops, plants, and incomplete field. Scoville, the intended receiver. He wanted a flag. Again, a good no call. They're letting them play. They're letting, allowing a lot of contact. It is incidental contact. It's the way defense should be played. He's got as much right to the ball as the offensive guy. But Timmy, we are celebrating, obviously, the inaugural game of the Big 12, and uh, we're very pleased to have Steve Hatchell, the commissioner of the Big 12, with us right now. First of all, congratulations uh, just getting this thing done. This is tremendous. <laughs> well, it's been the help of an awful lot of people, Terry. This conference is made up of uh, 12 wonderful groups of people, and they're the ones that uh, deserve all the credit for making this work. Steve has an honor. Old Southwest Conference guy and spent time in the Big Eight. 
At times, you must feel like a marriage counselor trying to get these two together and, and solve some of the problems that came up bringing two conferences like that together. Well, and for me, it's even better because I have a chance to work with friends. And uh, for me, this is uh, coming home and to be with a lot of friends. These people have worked so hard to make this go. And if uh, the public, the media, everybody had a chance to sit in our meetings and see what happens, they'd have a chance to say, these people are really, really together. They've got big issues. They've settled them. They've moved ahead. It's been a very, very uh, tough decisions. Uh, a lot of things had to happen. And along the way, there's been changes in intercollegiate athletics. Yeah. And so I'm, sure there was some, work. I'm sure there was some feelings bruised along the way, too. From the, I mean, you talk to the folks at the Big 8, and they say, wow, the office is in Dallas instead of uh, where they were before. And, you know, the non-qualifier thing and, and overruling uh, the coaches on the playoff and the presidents and that kind of thing. And uh, as a mediator, at times, that must be tough. It's been tough. But, again, I've got the resources and the opportunity to work with some great people to say, We've made the decision, we've taken a vote, now let's move on, and that's a credit to just, uh, again, just special people. I agree, that's a credit to everybody, and it's come out now by far the best conference, you know, when you look at the power rankings, and, and look at this. Well, you look at the upcoming games that are confirmed on ABC. Now, this is not the complete schedule of Big 12 games and games that are on, but uh, there will be many more, but some great matchups here when you look up and down the line. Just terrific, and I think if you look at our conference from top to bottom, 1 through 12, with seven that were in the top 25 last year, the the two-time defending national champion Nebraska Cornhuskers, which in this day and time is so hard to do. What a credit to their program. We're excited just to get this season going. Well, and December 7th, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game on ABC, and that's something that uh, maybe some of the coaches don't love because that's another opportunity for a loss, but I think tremendous you know, it for the fans. means a lot to our conference. Absolutely. And, uh, we're excited to have it here on ABC as well. Steve, Steve, thanks an awful lot for coming by. Thank you both. Good to see you. Southwest both. Conference Big Eight, biggest merger since Cap City and Disney. <laughs> Steve, thank you. Steve Hatchell, the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference. And uh, not only looking forward to a great year, but uh, I think long term. This is, uh, you know, Timmy, not to overstate it, but in terms of college football, this is uh, certainly an historic day when uh, you look at the lineup of Big 12 teams. And the schedule this year. A lot of people, Terry, over the years have talked about super conferences. The SEC was first to go to 12, which allowed them to have a championship game. And a lot of other teams have followed. And, of course, uh, now you have a lot of those super conferences, and it's amazing. Well, Kavanaugh under pressure and throws it away, so it brings up a third down and seven on the 43-yard line. 3.04 remaining here in the third. And neither team... Able to put any points on the board here in the second half. And by the way, speaking of all the attention that this game has gotten, the attendance, 43,143, the sixth highest in the stadium, the ASU Stadium history, and the capacity is listed at 42,000. Third and seven, Kavanaugh over the middle throws behind Anderson, his intended receiver. And he was about two yards short of a first down where he would have caught that ball. Kansas State will have to give it up again. Still, as much offense as we've seen out of Texas Tech, they can't get the points on the board. In punt formation for Kansas State, number 16, James Garcia. The super conferences. I think the WAC Deep is number 13. Yeah. takes in five time zones. <laughs> 16 teams, right? In the WAC and the WAC spread out all over the place. Numbers on Garcia. Sammy, probably oh, look at this punt. The buck back watches it sail into the end zone. What a punt by Garcia of 57 yards. So the average goes up. I know it must surprise you, though. We talked throughout in, in the pregame about the explosive offenses. Uh, you know, the one thing we expected was big plays, especially you look at the aggressive risk type defense of Kansas State, and it's 14-3. Uh, to High risk, high reward defense, and you would think that it would give up some points. Obviously, number one defense in the country last year statistically, but yeah, you, you would think both of these teams would score more. We certainly expected a high scoring game. Texas Tech has just killed itself. Yeah. One out of five in field goals, a couple penalties, and turn the ball over. Debbie Lethridge is in at quarterback. He had cramps a while ago. And to give to Sammy Morris, the fullback, straight ahead. Met right at the line by Jerome Evans. Jerome Evans, number 98, goes 305 pounds at least. 
And look at what Lethridge and Kavanaugh have done. Very similar, actually. 168 yards in the air by Kavanaugh, the one touchdown. And we told you that Lethridge doesn't make many errors. As a matter of fact, he went 211 straight passes at one point without an interception. Gain of one on the last play. The give to Hanspar. And that at the line of scrimmage as well. So the Kansas State defense getting stingy. Tackled by number 96, Lance Grace. Evans Jordan again in on the play. Evans. As well as Lance Grace, a redshirt freshman out of Denver. Jer Jerome Evans, though. Timmy, a guy who's 6'6". He's listed at 305 out of Waco, Texas, but played at Hutchinson Community College along with Thad Swayzer, who lines up right next to him. And he's quick. He ran an 11-3 in high school. It's a guy that's 300 pounds. Third and ten, the crowd a little bit noisier. Incomplete, almost intercepted. Now Chris that was Cannon passing. was there. That was definitely pass interference. It should have been called. Field Scoville, the intended receiver. He's furious, too, because Field Scoville feels like they've been getting away with too much contact. If you watch him this time, that he is hit in the head way before the ball gets there. Now, can he take place? him inside out and now watch this here comes the safety and watch and tell me if there's any contact all right candy comes up boom he's all over his head before the ball ever gets there he is going for the pick but you cannot go through the receiver to get it before the ball is there chris cannon the all-american had eight interceptions a year ago and they've actually thrown to his area a number of times today Jimmy Lethridge now one of his last 11 passes is off they came awfully close to getting to him Kenny in his own 22 dances back to the 30 across to the 31 yard line a punt of 59 yards and a return of nine and let's take you down to Lewis Johnson Lewis hey guys thanks a lot you know you talked about these huge crowds over 43,000 here today we have been seeing this or KSU has been seeing this in the 90s and because of that uh, there have been a lot of stadium improvements and one of the biggest this year is that big old jumbotron behind me but you know who gets the biggest enjoyment out of that it has been the players I've been watching them and they've been checking themselves out all game so it's been a great improvement for the stadium Lewis you're right the players love it but I have to tell you, the officials don't. They keep playing replays up there, okay. and the crowd boos them with those controversial <laughs> calls or close calls. Ah, but the players never change. Always looking for their face on TV. Hey, hey. So it's first and 10 at the 31. Kavanaugh, a little swing pass out to Lawrence. It's away from one tackler, but down at the 35-yard line, Anthony Armour made the stop. Armour mentioned a Butkus candidate is third position since coming to Texas Tech. Yeah, watch this. Here's our armor. Now he's played outside linebacker, inside linebacker, defensive end, fills the gaps, and he runs to the football. That's an outstanding play, and the reason is because Robert Johnson, number seven, broke down, forced him back in, and when he did, pursuit from armor just took him down. I'm telling you, the guy can run dawn to dusk. He started as a sophomore, set out 94 with a knee injury, then moved to defensive end, but now he's in a position on the open side at linebacker that he loves. Here he is again. Kavanaugh goes down. Look at him, armor all over. Oh. Tell me that guy cannot run. And you talk about anticipation. He was there as soon as Kavanaugh took his first step backwards. He's the gap filler. That's what they call him. They put him on that open side specifically for that reason. So it brings up third and 12, the final seconds of the third quarter ticking away. And an uneventful third quarter in terms of the scoreboard. Texas Tech again with opportunities, but cannot connect on the field goals. And so it's defensive struggle. And we're back with more between Texas Tech and Kansas State after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Yeah, they don't do the wave in the stadiums anymore. It's the Macarena. Yeah, these girls have it together. I actually thought Al Gore was going to do that the other night up on the podium. And, and I'm shocked that you were doing it right next to me up here in the booth. I think you got to loosen up. I saw you the other day. You made Kirby Puckett do it. You wouldn't do it. <laughs> you will never catch me doing the Macarena. That's a promise to you, Tim. <laughs> Opening play of the fourth quarter. 14-3 Kansas State. Kavanaugh to throw. And loads of time. 
picked off. The intended receiver was Anderson and out of, out of bounds. Dane Johnson with a pick, but he was out of bounds. And let's go very quickly up to John Saunders in New York. All right, Terry, thanks a lot. Florida and the Gators off to the races early in this one. Fourth and one on their opening drive. Terry Jackson bounces off a couple of tackles, still slips across for the touchdown. The Gators in front early, 7-0. Terry. All right, John, a scene I think we'll see often this year. Yeah, that game right there could get to be like a track meet. Well, fourth and 12, Garcia in the punt. And this is another beauty. Johnson back to his own 25. Still on his feet. And lost a couple of yards. Back to the 22-yard line. A punt of 47 yards, and he lost a couple trying to return it. Dimitri Denmark on the tackle. We'll step away and be back. It's 14 to 3, Kansas State. The Super Bowl champs invade Chicago. The Cowboys and the Bears kick off our Monday night show. Good look at the Flint Hill region here. The hills and plains of Kansas and Wagner Field, KSU Stadium. Where it is 14 to 3, Kansas State leading Texas Tech. Zebby Lethridge taking over on first down. Nowhere to go, and now the ball on the turf. And it goes out at the seven yard line. And there was no receiver open anywhere near. By number seven, Clyde Johnson five. was there. I'll tell you this, Terry. If Texas Tech is going to win this ball game, they've got to make some serious changes. Lethridge in the first half, 11 of 20. In the second half, he's just one for eight. That time, he never even got the ball off. But he did save a turnover. Now, here the ball is loose. Watch his right hand knock it out of bounds right there to prevent the turnover. Very smart play by Zebby Lethridge and avoiding what could have been a catastrophic situation. But a loss of 16, they do retain possession. You're right. Now second and 26. We're backed up all the way to the eight-yard line. Had they turned it over there, it was Katie bar the door. The option, up to hands part. No rule. Out to the 11-yard line, Deshaun Fogel, along with Travis Oaks. There to make the stop. Colorado continues to run it up in Washington State. You know what we have not seen in this ball game yet? There's the option. We have not seen the option reverse. Yeah, you were calling for it near the end of the first half, and we haven't seen that at all. It's a great play. They worked on it at practice yesterday again. We saw them use it last year with great success. Especially when you have a Byron Hanspar that everybody keys on, and you know the ball is going to him to come back the opposite way. Third and 24. Over the middle, complete to Stacy Mitchell. Trying to get away and up to the 27 yard line, but he needed to get up to the 34, almost the 35. Zebby Lethridge, with that ability to get onto the corner and buy time, is what made that completion. He gets more time before he releases the ball than any quarterback that's a straight drop backer out of the shotgun. Now you watch this, look. 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. He's buying time, still looking for receivers. Now, here's number six at the bottom of your screen. He's just going to free up, go the other way. Zebby sees him. Here's the completion. Great broken pattern, adjusting your pattern for the first down, or the uh, to get back to the original line of scrimmage. They still have to punt, but a, a big pickup. And the coverage men couldn't stop. The crown on the field, and they're going downhill. Oh, and he's stopping this over and hands his head. And into the end zone. And Kansas State has it for a touchdown. Mario Smith with the recovery in the end zone. What did you say about Katie a moment ago? Bar the door. The lynch mob defense has taken over. Texas Tech, another mistake. No chance here. Brad Spinks, the long snapper, put it high. They had no chance to get it. Jeremy Hernandez looked at it, sail over his head, get touchdown, back. Kansas State. Get back, and the extra point 
is up, and it is good. And it is 21 to 3, Kansas State. You mentioned Spinks, the long snapper. He's been so for four years. Very uncharacteristic of him. Bill Snyder's club up now, 21 to 3. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Burger King, where you get your burgers with. 1251 left in this one. And a Kansas State touchdown a moment ago. We're putting them up 21 to 3. And they'll bring it out to the 20. You know, that last touchdown should never have occurred. Brad Spinks, the long center snapper, right here. There is a new rule this year. You cannot hit that center for a second. You've got to let one second pass before there's contact. He should not be worrying about that. His only job is to get that ball right there to Hernandez. Instead, he's concerned about getting into the block after the snap. Let's it go high. Hernandez never has a chance. With that new rule where there's not contact on the center, on that snapper, they should just be able to get it back there without worrying about getting hit or worrying about getting hurt or anything. That should not take place anymore. He's been solid for four years, too. He's been the deep snapper. But now Texas Tech, six fumbles on the afternoon, three loss. Adrian Irvin in for Byron Hanspart up to the 30-yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders to get an update on the Michigan-Illinois game. John? It was a two-point game, 10-8, in fact, until Scott Dreisbach Throws 10 yards to Russell Shaw. Dreisbach also ran one in for 72 yards, as you know. And Michigan starting to pull away, although plenty of time left, and it's 17-8. Terry. All right, John, thank you. Here it is, 21-3. But Texas Tech trying to get back in it here. Zebby Lethrick with room up the middle. Down at the 40-yard line. So, on a second and one play, Lethridge with plenty to get the first down. Kansas State with a pretty good streak going here. Six straight wins on opening day, going for seven. Texas Tech, well, Texas Tech is struggling. And Texas Tech trying to win a game on the road, a game they really thought they, they had to have. They had to steal one here early from Kansas State. Number one, a road opener since 1977. And that pass underthrown. You know, but last year they played Penn State mm -hmm. on the road. And they gave Penn State all they could handle. And Nittany Lions had to kick a field goal with four seconds left to win it by a point. Yeah, 24 to 23. The final on that one. Doesn't get any easier either. No, look it at, really look doesn't. At, look at their schedule. The sixth best. That's in the country, folks. Even though you have Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa State. It's not the Big 12. That's the country. No, that's right. And you know, Texas Tech plays six bowl teams and the most conference games, five against teams that were in the top 15 last year. Now, they're scrambling just shy of the first down. He's up to about the 48-yard line and run out of bounds by Mario Smith. You know, I said Texas Tech plays five games that were in the top 15 last year. Last year, they only played three and lost two of those. Lethridge feels the pressure again. He's got great instincts. And look at his mobility. You know, when we mentioned him earlier about being a guy like Randall Cunningham, he's explosive. Now, the knock on Lethridge has been that he has been erratic, but the coaches tell us he's been much more consistent over the last half of last season and in camp. Well, he doesn't make many mistakes. That's the key. The give to Irvin fights his way maybe for a yard, doesn't get to the 50-yard line. Deshaun Fogel was there to stop him. Now we're talking about, you know, erratic. We're not so much mistakes as much as, you know, his ability to get on streaks and then get cold. For instance, he was uh, he had 11 completions in the first half. He came out, he started out one for eight, and I think right now he's he's two for, uh, for 11. Well, and Texas Tech has certainly struggled trying to get points on the board. They've moved the ball. Kansas State takes a timeout, and so will we. If time permits.
commits. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. We've got 11-15 remaining in this one, the first Big 12 matchup ever. And straight ahead, it appears to have the first down, Zebby Lethridge. Just needed about a half yard or so. Got a good mark. He did get enough for the first, so they'll move the chains. And once again, Texas Tech in Kansas State territory. But it really has not been able to capitalize all day. First down and 10, 40 yard line. Lethridge in the top five in five different passing categories in Texas Tech history of the best sophomore season of anyone ever for the Red Raiders last year. This time going up top, Sheldon Bass and double covered. Incomplete, but fortunate that that one wasn't picked off. Dangerous pass. Just two completions this half. Zebby's got to find some type of rhythm, but that's not even a good decision. He's double covered. Now watch this. As the Bass goes down the sidelines, he gets inside coverage, outside coverage. Watch this. The ball comes. It's almost intercepted. Now here comes the safety. The ball goes up. Now if you watch Chapman go down, it lands on his chest. Or right next to him anyway. I thought he was going to pick that thing off. Well, and Bass made a pretty good play actually coming back and creating some contact so that Chapman couldn't pick it off. Second and ten. Lethridge under pressure now. Out to Irvin. And up to the 44-yard line. And they're about five yards shy of a first down. But Andrew Timmons was all over Zebby Lethridge that time. Kansas State showing tremendous, tremendous conditioning. Every play seems to run about, about 40 yards because he's rolling out. So if you're on the defense, you're chasing him about 40, 45 yards. And maybe answering some of those questions. Three starters gone from that front line. And they've done a heck of a job. Third and six out to Irvin. Who can't turn the corner. Stopped at the 42-yard line and knocked out of bounds by Clyde Johnson and Lamar Chapman. Dangerous but spectacular play by Lethridge that time. He was wrapped up and going down when he finally got the pitch out. Now watch this. He's got to read the end. Cuts inside. He's on the way down from the backside tackle and forces it out to the outside. Irvin just couldn't get around the corner. Still made positive yards, though, rather than going out and going down where Lethridge would have. And Irvin's been in throughout this entire drive for Byron Hanspart, who's had trouble with that ankle. And at first, we thought it was just the taping job on the ankle. Perhaps it's more. Lethridge has the first down inside the 40, about at the 38-yard line. Or at least it appears that he has the first down. Should have enough. That was almost predetermined. He never really looked back at Sammy Moore as much. Just made a quick fake. He was going to turn that up and run that himself from the get-go. Now bring out the chains. That's awfully close. Travis Oaks made the tackle. Lethridge has to start thinking about the clock now, too. Down 21 to 3. They've got 9.24 left. So they move the chains, give him the first. Now he's got to really start to pick things up a little bit. Yeah, 9.22 left. And counting for Spike Dykes to get his club back in this one. They've had their chances throughout the entire afternoon. Up the far sideline and incomplete. Bass again wants the flag. We've seen it all afternoon long. Receivers wanting the flag and the interference. Dimitri Denmark on the coverage, and they're just not getting it. Still trying to go away from Canny. Still trying to go man coverage and go long. They had twin receivers one side, and they sent to the single to receiver, and that's where they were looking all the way. Challenging that side. Lethridge now 14 for 33. 164 yards in the air. Here's Irvin with a lot of room, but the hole closes quickly. To the 32, Travis Oaks caught him up. He tripped him right about at the 32. Oaks, we've called his name throughout the day. Only a sophomore 
Boy, Overland he, Park, Kansas. He's tired down, too. He's sucking wind right now, but that was a terrific play. He actually got caught inside, had to dive to get outside and make that tackle and was dragged a couple yards. But first team All-American defensive freshman of the year in the Big Eight. Butkus Award candidate. Two Butkus Award candidates in this one game. No longer the other Oaks. No, that's right. As a matter of fact, they say he's the glue to the defense. Everything revolves around how he plays. Only a sophomore. Third and four. Lethridge out to Irvin. Leaps to try to get the first down, but he's well short up to the 30-yard line. Okay, number 22, Adrian Irvin. He got down to the 30, and he's about a yard and a half short. He went in the air, though. He's airborne here. Watch Irvin. Now, there's a guy that's 204 pounds. Good form, though. You think so? And not much of a splash. 9-6, 9-7. Brings out fourth and more than a yard, about a yard and a half. Texas Tech obviously needs to go for it here. Irvin along with the two fullbacks, Morris and Jones in the backfield. It's Irvin straight ahead, and he has the first down and more. Oh, he almost busted that thing. One more man to beat. You're, right. you're in that short yardage when the defensive backs and linebackers are up close and cheating up to the defensive line. You bust through that first wave, you're gone. Look how tight everybody is defensively. I mean, you're looking at the safety four. Smith, he's up tight. If he gets by him and bounces to the outside there, boy, he's gone. You don't get by Mario Smith very often. No, that's a good point. He likes to play smash, uh, smash mouth football all the time. He's a good hard hitter. First and 10, Lethridge throwing over the middle and dropped. This is a good drive, Terry. They've worked hard. They've converted fourth down three different times now to get the first and move the chains. The thing is, they're eating up a lot of clock. They're already down to seven minutes and 12 seconds. Donnie Hart dropped that last pass over the middle. And Spike's run out of time here. 7-12 left in this game. And the lights are on at KSU Stadium. Lights are on, and it seems to be getting a little bit cooler. Maybe a front's coming through as they look down at the flag, and it's waving pretty well now. Irvin, the lone setback on second and ten. The sideline's an incomplete, broken up by Denmark. Again, Sheldon Bass, the intended receiver, but good coverage and a nice play by Dimitri Denmark. The junior out of Winter Haven, Florida. Getting good support out of the young guys today. The guys that have stepped up and placed the quarterback, Joe Gordon, who broke his leg in August. Watch this. This is great coverage. Lethridge throws it so the receiver has to pump and come back for the ball. But he's all over it. That's terrific coverage by Denmark. And if those guys can do that and can hold things out until Joe Gordon gets back, he'll be back. The All-American quarterback will be back for the Nebraska game. There's Joe right there. Broke his leg August 2nd. On a passing drill. 17th play of the drive right here, and a completed pass to Field Scoble. And a first down inside the 15 at the 14 yard line. But Tim, time becoming a major factor, and now the 18th play of the drive coming up. They can't afford to take this much time on, on their drive. No, you're right. That does stop the clock with seven minutes left. But watch the way Scoble walks the sideline. He knows all day he's been around that sideline a couple times at Coley Mount. But for the most part, he's got a great sense of where his boundary is. He keeps his feet in. He's a very smart, well-disciplined receiver. That's 16 catches last year for 303 yards and a touchdown. One of the prime targets for Zebra Lethridge this year. Play action on the roll. Lethridge. We were finding a man. It's Urban and just outside of his reach. He was wide open. Oh, there's no question he was open. Somehow Mario Smith got there late, and I don't know if it was his man or if anybody picked him up, but somehow he found himself in the back of the end zone. It's because Lethridge rolled all the way to the left, and then when he came back, it looked like he broke his pattern, went to the corner, was alone, and the ball was overthrown. But look at this. He's There's nobody even in the picture. Boy, another missed opportunity. The, it was at this point right here, Zebby Lethridge started pounding his helmet, knowing that they had a touchdown. So it brings up second and 10 after the missed opportunity. Straight drop this time. To the end zone and almost. 
almost picked off. It should have been. Lamar Chapman had it hit right between the numbers. We saw Mario Smith with a similar play earlier in the game, and now Lamar Chapman would love to get this one back. Boy, Chapman, they picked on him all day. The freshman has responded fairly well. Here he's got good coverage. Again, there's hands everywhere using those hands. But here's the ball. Here's the pick, and I don't know how he missed it. 14-yard line. How frustrating is that? I think he looked up the sidelines and saw it was wide open and started reading the headlines before the ball was in his hands. Look at that six before he had the ball. He comes off the field now. On third and ten. They don't have enough guys on the field. Now they have too many guys on the field, I think. Touchdown. Lost to Sammy Morris, a touchdown. But there is a flag on the play, and it's all the way on the other side of the field at the 14-yard line. There's only 11 blue jerseys on the field now, but Chapman had run off the field. He was over with the coaches, and then he came back. That's got to be all sides of nothing else. I guess the defense, the penalty has declined. Touchdown. Yeah, illegal substitution is what they call it, and uh, it will stand as a touchdown. <laughs> you could have taken your pick on what that was. Whatever you want. But <laughs> Sammy Morris with the touchdown catch, the redshirt freshman out of San Antonio. And so it's 21-9 to with the extra point forthcoming. Chapman ran all the way over to the coaches, and they were shoving him back on the field, and he ran back in, and the flag dropped. So now do they go for two here? Looks like Lethridge is on the field. It's 21. Yeah. You know, I think you go for two all the way out now. You're yeah. down 21 to 9. You need every point you can get. And remember, there is overtime now in college football, so it will not end at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Jones and inside the end line. Boy, he threaded the needle that time between Johnson and Smith. <laughs> Brad Spinks, the man who was a tight end and also the deep snapper, the mistake earlier, making up for it here. So the two-point conversion on the board, and it's 21 to 11 now, Kansas State in the lead. Best pass he's thrown this half. He just puts this one right through the defenders. The touchdown drive by Texas Tech making it 21 to 11 now. They trail by 10, but it took six minutes and 12 seconds off the clock as you look at Andre Anderson back deep to receive the kick for Kansas State. So it took a lot of time off the clock. 20 plays going 80 yards. Down by 10, so they only need a touchdown, two-point conversion and field goal. A lot to ask. I think it's too early for the onside kick, but in a spike, he's a gambler. Good decision. Jimmy Dean at his own five. And knocked to the ground right at the 20-yard line. And that's where they'll start. Well, tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open, presented by Miller Life. Desper Parnovic at 19 under. He is the leader at this point. And, of course, his professional debut, Tiger Woods, playing in Milwaukee. And he is at four under par, 15 shots off the lead. Our coverage begins at 3 Central here on ABC Sports. How about Tiger Woods, 20 years old, he does the three amateur titles, goes pro, and in his very first pro tournament, makes the cut, goes 67, 69, and then he's Got four a 73 under par. today, but he's four under par and impressive. Yep. The first at 10, Kansas State now keeping it on the ground, but the pitch away from Lawrence and very fortunate to have it go out of bounds. Oh my. What a dangerous pitch that was. I'm going to tell you something. Fatigue becoming a factor all over this field. This is sloppy play here, and it's a bad pitch. Lawrence can't get to it. This is an accident by kicking it out of bounds, but it's probably not a bad thing at that point because a lot of white jerseys were flying around and could pick that ball up. And now you're backed up, Tim, to the 8-yard line, and it's second and 18. So if you want to take a shot at the first down in the next couple of plays. You may have to throw the ball, and that's a dangerous proposition this deep in your territory, too. But you don't want to play passive defense here. You want to stay aggressive. You don't go to a prevent, even though they have that far to go for the first. Kavanaugh just went wide right. They hike it right back to Lawrence. The snap straight to Lawrence, and he goes out to the 16-yard line. And that's a play that you don't see very often. It's like the old single wing. They used to do that a lot. 
but again, he ran away from where the blitz looked like it was coming, tried to get to the corner quickly, so it was a good call for that, that particular situation, but still, it's third and almost 15 yards for the first. Now watch this. Straight back to Lawrence. All the pressure's coming backside. Now stop it right there, and, and you think, holy cow, the field has opened up here. But he finally make, makes the outside cut and gets caught from behind. And Kavanaugh wasn't even in your picture when they lined up. Looked was... like for a minute he'd get that first. Mm -hmm. Third and 14 now, and out of the shotgun. Looking to run all the way, Kavanaugh dumped in the backfield at the 14-yard line. Now, you know what happens here. Kansas State has to punt. They're deep in their own territory. Texas Tech is going to get good field position, and the clock's down to five and a half minutes. There's still plenty of time left here. But Bill Snyder talking to his defense. Sean Fogel, the linebacker there, having a conversation with him. James Garcia on the punt. He's standing at his own goal line. Using as much time off the clock as they can here. Play clock down to 10. Getting up the return. Another beauty. All the way back to the 28 is Johnson. Straight ahead to the 40-yard line. A punt of 57 yards again. He had a 57-yarder earlier in the second half. Return of 12. And here are the overtime rules this year in college football. No sudden death. Teams get equal possession. And the offense beginning at their opponent's 25-yard line. And you're on offense until you score, lose the ball, or lose it on downs. Great rule. Should have been in a long time ago, although I think we're a little uh, premature here, a little wishful thinking 10 points with uh, 440 to go but I'll tell you what the game has changed a little bit here dramatically and all of that set up by a coin flip after regulation has ended Stacy Mitchell can't hang on Clyde Johnson on the coverage but he had it in his hands <laughs> So 434 left. And it brings up a second down and 10. Total yards, Texas Tech way out in front. Boy, that, that, when you look at the scoreboard, it says 21 to 11 Kansas State, and you look at those figures, you say, how does it happen? Well, that's how right there, plus the fact they've missed four field goals because two of the three turnovers didn't come back to home. Well, let's reach out to Mitchell, and this one's under throw. So it brings up third and ten. The one turnover that was very critical, the bad snap on the punt and the touchdown recovered by Mario Smith. Zemi Lethridge, not a day statistically that he would like to remember. 16 out of 41. Not bad in the first half, but second half. He hadn't been able to hit the ocean. Three receivers to the near side. Lethridge looking to run all the way, and he's got room. Inside the 40 and out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That's all he thought about. He was going to run the entire time. Uh-oh, he better be careful here. He doesn't want to get thrown out of the ballgame. He hit an injured player, accidentally ran out of bounds, and hit the guy on crutches. The guy took the crutches and hit him. <laughs> Zebby wanted to go back and get him. Well, you use what you have, you know? You know who that is? That's Gramatica, the kicker. Martin Gramatica, the kicker who injured his leg this past week. He's going to, he thinks it's funny. Now watch this. Zebby runs out of bounds, actually gets a push from behind, so he couldn't stop. Well, maybe he could. Here he hits Gramatica. All right, watch Gramatica. Boom, don't hit me. Betsy Kicker. Pass intended. With Donnie Hart, an incomplete. And again, a lot of contact. I'll tell you what, Jimmy, in the secondary of this game, they have let a lot of contact go. I know some is incidental, but a lot of the use of the hands, and they have not called. Terry, I hope they continue that throughout the year. I hope they let them play. Because the way the offenses have gone with the spread attacks and the passing offenses and all the points that were scored in this past year, and we're seeing it in some games here again today across the country, you know, you got to get the defense back in this thing. Every rule change has been to benefit the offense. You squeeze the hash marks in, you give the receivers more room, you can't let the uh, 
Can't let the, the defenders get on them too much. You gotta let them play. You gotta get the defense back into the game of football. Bob Cope, the defensive coordinator for Kansas State, has the time clock running out, the play clock. And just inside of that, Zebby Lethridge gets a timeout. They'll have second and ten when we come back. Michigan State scored 52 today in beating up on Purdue. They take on number one Nebraska next week at 11 a.m. Central Time. You will see that one. And then at 2.30 Central Time, TCU taking on Oklahoma. Other games available on pay-per-view. So check with your local cable operator for those next Saturday on ABC Sports. Second and 10 at the 39. Strobel in motion to the near side. Lutzridge now scrambling. Down he goes at the 46. Good coverage downfield. Good fill, too, by Niall Wyron. Everybody running around in there, and of course you know what Lethridge can do if you overrun him. Wyron maintained his leverage. Keep an eye on 44 here. Now he's got his blocker, releases him, breaks down and plays inside out, and then lunges and gets him. Well, that's a nice play. That guy's 250 pounds. He's got tremendous ability to change his body weight. Once you get that 250 going in one direction, it's hard to come back and catch a guy like Lethridge. Texas Tech has taken another time out here. We speak of Wyron. He was injured for most of last year. Just had a number of injuries which hampered him throughout the year. Still had eight sacks. 94 was an all-big eight player. You know, he's the only returning starter on that line. Uh -huh. Of course, all-conference in 1994. And then, as you mentioned, fought through the injuries and the blocks to get those eight sacks. 16 for his career. And Miami with the win today. And Michigan up 20 to 8 now on the Atlanta. Full day of college football. What do you think about the top five? Tim, we had... Obviously, John and Todd on at halftime talking about their top five and their thoughts. Nebraska far and ahead. Well, team. I think you have to say that right now as, you know, what they've done over the last two years, but I don't think they're going to end up that way because of the, the power in the schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, week in and week out. Then, if they get through the North, then they go ahead to the uh, Big 12 championship game before they ever get to a national title. The crowd on his feet. Third and 17. Lethrick rolling out. Tipped and incomplete. Broken up. I believe it was and Travis Oaks who got a hand on that. They've got one more shot to get the first. And I'd go right after Candy right now. I'd throw it, Candy. Candy's having cramps. Matter of fact, he may even come out. Chris Canny had a problem in coverage that time. He was having cramps during the play. And just before this snap, before he went out to coverage, he was having some cramps, grabbed his calves. Now he's trying to, you can see the way he's running. It's not natural. It's not that same kind of flow that he normally has. And see him coming up lame right here. That's why I said at that point, I'd go right back at him, but it looks like he's gonna come out of the game and they won't have a chance to do that. We have seen a number of players today with cramps. And at least five or six guys come off the field holding their calves. You know, a lot of them are the skilled folks, too. The, uh, the lean players, they don't have a whole lot of fat, body fat. And consequently, you get a day like this. Yeah. And actually, in the last 15 to 20 minutes or so, it's cooled off a bit. Washington State with another score. So that makes it 37 to 13 in that game. And here, a fourth and 17 coming up for Texas Tech. And they are three for three in terms of fourth down conversions on the afternoon. So right now you've got Chapman at one defensive corner. You've got uh, Denmark at the other, a freshman and a junior. And you're down to one play, fourth down and forever. Fourth and 17. And incomplete, broken up, but here comes a flag. And Clyde Johnson was there. Matt DeBuck, the intended receiver, and he came right over his back. Clyde Johnson, the senior, got there just a little bit too early. Pass interference, just the defense. 
automatic first down. So the automatic first down. Boy, what a break for Texas Tech. Huge. It was fourth and 17, and even with the completion, if that ball was complete, most likely they would not have had the first down. There's no question the contact was made before the ball ever got there, so it's a good call. They move at 15, they move the chains, they give them a first. Now they're inside the 35. First down at the 33. Lethbridge looking to run and now loses the ball, but Texas Tech gets it back. <laughs> wow. This game has had everything. Lynn Schurler, the right tackle from Sheridan Lake, Colorado, got the fumble back. You know, you look at who has had the ball, and we talked about how Texas Tech statistically has dominated, and Kansas State in this quarter has only had the ball for two minutes and 20 seconds, almost nine minutes in the hands of Texas Tech. Second and 14. Pump fake, and now tripping up at the 31-yard line. I don't think there was any contact. He just tripped. Is that be Lethridge? You know what else is amazing about that statistic that tells the tale of this game is the fact that offensively they had have not had the ball much, yet they still scored a touchdown because of the turnover by Texas Tech. Wait, I hold. mean by, uh, yeah, Tech. Well, he almost lost the ball again, Tim. And that's why he eventually fell down, I think, trying to gain control of the football. He's one of the only two guys that's allowed to have a towel, too, to clean his hands and dry him off. New rules in college football. Third and eight under pressure and batted into the hands of an offensive lineman. Now the flag comes down. That's Chris Whitney who ended up with the football. He had to be the most surprised person on Wagner Field. Pass was completed to number 66, Chris Whitney. Niall Wyron was the man who had Zebby Lethridge in his grasp. You know, forget the penalty, forget anything that's occurred. The lineman shouldn't have caught it. Although, that, you know, that ball was touched. But, but the bottom line is he still shouldn't have caught it because if it was an incomplete pass, they'd be back inside the 35. This way, he's back at the 38. Well, they lose yardage, you're right, in terms of catching the football. Well, see, the, the, the penalty, it doesn't make any difference whether they pick it up or not. It doesn't make any difference because he caught the ball. He lost yardage. And the ball was all the way back to the 38. Right. If, he, if he just lets it hit, now the ball's back up at the 33. As it is, it's resting on the 38, and it's fourth and 15. Take a look. We have illegal touches by the offense. Now watch this. Ross him down. All right, here's the ball. Down. Ball goes up. He makes the catch. And now it's back at the 36. Yeah, hit his own man and actually hit one of the offensive linemen in the back and came back. And that is the reason that it is an illegal pass. And Whitney should not have caught the ball. So you not only lose the yardage, but you lose the down, too. Right. That That is the key right there is the fact that he made the catch he loses the yardage and, and then with the penalty he loses the down bottom line he shouldn't have caught it that's what i said <laughs> 3 to play, 21 to 11, Kansas State. And they're trying to put the wraps on this one. Yep, they're trying to make it seven straight home opening wins. That's uh, Bill Schneider, what he has done with this program. When you look at where it was when he came to Manhattan, Kansas, I mean, it was 136 and 1, the program was, closing out the 80. He came in 89. He was 1 in 10 his first year. And now, coming off a season in which he was 10 and 2, finished number 8 in the final AP poll, and they win a bowl game, the Holiday Bowl. Boy, it's something else. Yeah, it really is. It's been terrific what he's done. He does. He's not putting this one in his back pocket yet. As a matter of fact, Texas Tech needs the field goal somewhere along the way. Then they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Well, they're going to line up here for the field goal, so they have got to hit this. Now, there's going to be 50-plus yards. They've got the leg, but they haven't been able to get it through the uprights. And this is Jared Greaser on for Tony Rogers, who is just one of five on the afternoon. He got it. And it is good. He got it. They're one touchdown away now. Greaser with the field goal 
to make it 21 to 14. Now you set up for the onside kick. 53 yard field goal by Jared Greaser. He got a good snap and a good hold. Now he steps up and he's got a good post and watch this thing. He had a little room to spare, but he made it through the uprights and this was a huge field goal. Oh, wow, is that big. 53 yards. And they're down by seven. And Spike believes he's still in this one, and he is. Oh, you have to believe that. Yep. You're down two, 227 to play, still have time. All right, here's a, here's a hypothetical, okay? If you look ahead, and obviously this is jumping ahead, but with the new rules in college football, it certainly changes your thoughts on going for two at the end of a game. It makes it even more complicated now. Because no, no question about it, that. You know, normally I think early in the season, certain things dictate whether or not you would go for two, go for the win or the tie. Now you've got overtime. That's thrown into the mix. If I'm Spike Dykes and I'm fortunate enough here to get a touchdown in the last two and a half minutes, I guarantee I'm going for one to get into that. I've dominated everything all day. You put me down on the 25 and give me a shot to win this ball game. If you're Kansas State, on the other hand, and I know that's not the situation right now, but you've been dominated at least in terms of the statistics, in terms of the yardage and what you've been able to do offensively, you've got a different decision. I think either way you go for one. Throughout the year. No, oh, no, 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 no. But right now, the way the situation is, specifically Dykes. You know what, though? It's going to be fun debating the uh, the overtimes this year in college football. Well, this play right here will tell us whether we have to worry about it or not. Onside and recovered at the 44-yard line. So a big play by Kansas State. Justin Swift, number 86, the tight end, came up with.